All right, we're back again. And this time we're joined by none other than Mr. Khalil Ismail. And uh, he's here, he's taunting us with his Moroccan I'm just representing. football jersey. I'm representing. That's it, man. <laughs> representing. I'm just having you don't even watch football, though. I know. <laughs> just representing, though. That's what you got to represent, bro. Represent. Best kit, though. That's what we were just it's discussing. Nice that. I like that kit, man. It's a very nice kit, bro. Just having some Moroccan Algerian tea. I know. You know is that it, kit that Moroccan I bought? Moroccan Algerian tea. I don't know, bro. It's, it's, I just started beef. Just again. whatever. Whoever's drinking it, I that's what it is. Beef again, <laughs> I started beef, bro. I actually done a story before I was walking up, and I was like, yeah, I was gonna call some beef. <laughs> I had a jumper, and I thought, take it off, and it just started. Do you know what? what? I, I guess. <laughs> Who wants it? <laughs> I guess it depends who's drinking, it, isn't it? Yeah, it's true, actually. So we'll leave that. Do you want some more? Yeah, please. Um, but what happened to that Adidas uh, t shirt I bought you, bro? Well, I bought myself that I couldn't. The green one? Yeah. yeah I got it. Do you wear it, bro? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because that literally was the more... But you know, but you know football top. It's too big, bro, isn't it? No, no, football top. I don't know about you lot. You know, after you wear it a little bit, it smells. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What get, do you mean? It, it sticks to it, the it material. Sticks, the material and it starts smelling. Right. Do you find that? Even right. if you wash it, it doesn't Even if you off. wash it, it just instantly starts... Like, so what do you mean smells? Like with what? The material. I don't know, maybe sometimes some people's skin. Yeah. It don't go. So it makes you... Like when I wear football jerseys. Yeah. It's, maybe it's the polyester in it. Yeah, or I, I, don't, I don't really agree. <laughs> So it's like very rarely you see me wear that stuff. You pull it off though, bro. People are gonna oh, love me you. slurping on the yeah, on no, the mic, bro. bro. <laughs> like enjoying your tea. I'm loving it, bro. So okay. Yep. Should we tell him, bro? What are we telling him? What should we tell him, bro? Should I tell him what I told before? Nah, definitely don't <laughs> tell him that, bro. <laughs> We're gonna get. We already got banned by one video. Got banned already, bro. Let me loose, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. We got to do a Patreon take episode. Off, take off the PG, bro. <laughs> Over 18. You know, zombies. one of our videos got age restricted. Really? Yeah, bro. Was, like, I wasn't on it. No, you weren't on it. Thank but God. it was, let me just think, how many views have we got in that video now, bro? We had like 80 views on it. Oh, really? Because no one, no one was watching it, bro, because of the age restriction. Yeah, you got to verify your age and that. Yeah, yeah. You know the ones that you have to... Happens. Oh, okay. Because it was, the, there was, um, we were watching the street fights and stuff. Oh, uh, okay. So, I don't understand though, man. There's some videos that I watch. There's there's bear swearing in it, like, and then they don't they don't ban it. They don't give age restriction. I don't I know how they do it, bro. I still don't get that. Algorithm. I don't understand that, yeah, bro. Yeah, I, get, I don't get it. But yeah, like, um, should we announce it today or should we wait? What just do you want to uh, do? Let's uh, announce it towards the end. Towards the end. Okay, yeah. so, so you I said, a... very good actually. See, <laughs> I love that, bro. You see that? Okay, so if you're gonna watch this podcast all the way to the end, we'll we'll announce. A hey, an exclusive, a one. yeah, bro. Watch it to the end. I'm man. learning. Jeez. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. Ah, so wait for it. What you been up to since the last podcast, bro? Wait for it. Wait, wait for what? To the the announcement. Yeah, it's good. What, they have what, to that's wait. What doing it. Yeah, wait, they wait for it. You wait for it. So, what you been up to since the last podcast, bro? Um, when was the last podcast? <sighs> last year, bro. That's mad. When you what? came as Bruce been- Lee. When you were wearing, no, no, no. When you were wearing the, I came in. the super dry, uh, oh, nice, yeah, yeah. cozy. Oh, yeah, 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 the cozy one. When yeah, it went, yeah. the, 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 actually one of his things went, like the views on that, about the takedown, about pulling guard. Oh, yeah, yeah, when you <laughs> went savage. Went savage. <laughs> it's one of our top viewed videos, oh, bro. Is it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't pull guard, bro. Don't pull guard. <laughs> yeah, pumped in your face. Exactly, that's the one, bro, that's the one. Um, yeah, so, training, Competing. Oh uh, yeah, competing. Yeah, yeah we talk a bit about that, bro. Been back competing, teaching. So full flow with the club and stuff. Um, Legion, Khalid Smart Academy. Yeah. Um, where else? That's it, I think. Them two. So it was the... So it must have been... Was it just after the, after we came back? No, 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 no. It so was, it was like, like October. We, we could find out, yeah, bro. Yeah, October maybe. Yeah. But it was October time. Okay, so we were, back, yeah. we were back teaching. Yeah, we were back yeah. teaching, okay, bro. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think I had a few fights. Oh, actually, so I must have competed in November. Yeah, you did the so grappling kept, industries. And I've done... Um, All-Stars. All-Stars yeah. in Manchester. And then I've done... Um, uh, you had an injury since then as well, isn't it? Like a slight... What, now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. the moment, I've got injury. But... Wait, that's life, isn't that's it? That's the story of my life, bro. <laughs> that's like my middle name. Khalid, uh, torn, torn something. It's hamstrings. Hard. Yeah, something, bro. Torn something, Ismail. So how yeah. did you tear it, bro? So... Uh, <clears throat> I was stupid. No, it's not stupid. To be honest, it's like uh, I done my gi comp, so um, that was in the morning. That was in the morning, and then uh, 
my, then they done everything on the same day. So they had nogi in the, in the evening, four o'clock. And then uh, went out to eat, came back. And then I was just, I was tired. And I, everyone else in the club said, I'm not going to do it. And then I ended up saying, oh, no, I want to keep doing it. And then uh, got caught with a knee bar. And then uh, a lot of people don't know, I've only got one part of my hamstring still attached. Mm. And then I tore the other bit now. So I got no ham. I got, I got, a, I think one little bit. Just so there's hang- strands in it. There's a few strands. Yeah, so you've got three strands. So when I had my ACL, I had, um, they take out the semi membrous part of the, a strand out of it. And then, well, that's my stomach. You Is know? that my Is stomach? That you, that's my stomach. Bro, I can hear that. <laughs> that's my stomach going. <laughs> Where you put his tea? <laughs> Yeah, um, I thought that was me, bro. That was my stomach. <laughs> yeah, then um, yes, I tore I tore my semi membrous, and then I hope I'm saying it right. Yeah, and then um, it's a funny story though. I slipped in the bathroom <laughs> after that after the ACL, and the whole thing came off. What do you mean after the ACL? So because they take they take part of your hamstring out, yeah. and, they, and they use it for your ACL. Oh right, yeah. yeah. And when I done after done that, I, I went to the bathroom. I slipped. Were you then, having a shower or something? I went to the loo. Oh okay, and, right. And right. Remember, you got like crutches and stuff. So I was trying to sit down. Yeah. My legs slipped, and all I hear is ping, and then that and the other ham, then the hamstring completely tore. So it's like to, a uh, what's it called? Guitar strings, isn't it? Yeah, it was so. But yeah. I was like, no, was that painful? It was, yeah. What does it feel like? I mean, you've seen, you seen the scar on the back of my leg. It's like, yeah. it was like a long scar. And then... Um, does it feel like a cramp? Like a really bad cramp? You know what happened? It's like a instant sudden pain. And then... Uh, nothing. Then nothing. Then you lose like movement a little bit. Like you can't bend your knee properly because the, the, the attachment's gone. Mm. And then it's like, it's painful. And then you feel like, oh, because where it balls up, where it's gone up, you feel you feel a little lump in the yeah, back of your leg. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, then what I do? Yeah, so now to have another operation to get that reattached. And then, do you have like a loyalty card, bro? Like, <laughs> yeah, bro, I've got points. <laughs> points. Got okay, here you go. <laughs> Scan your club card. Bro. <laughs> it's me again. <laughs> well, why you know, do you, know, you, know why do you think you know, that is, bro? You know what's funny? Yeah, go on. Me and the surgeon have become best friends. <laughs> I swear. With Dr. Zielli. Yeah, bro. Shout out to Dr. Zielli. Yeah, yeah, big man. Yeah, because it's like, um, I've seen, I've had like nine, 10 10 major operations. Um, And it's like, the hamstring thing you're talking about, it's basically my, what I've, what I've come to, come to this point is that all the years of training, this is just wear and tear. Mm. So that's why I I get, I got these injuries. Previously, there was other things that were, that were happening that I got injured because of stupid stuff that was happening. Uh, one of my ACLs, I got, I tore my, I tore my ACL while I was talking to someone, and some guy double legged me while I was actually having a conversation with someone. Was he joking or something? No, nah, we were training, and then someone was saying bye. So as he said bye, I was talking to the guy. I said, "Hey, cool." Oh, yeah, so you were, you you were fi- you were we sparring. sparring, but we we kind of stopped, and then I was talking to the guy because he's saying bye to me, and I was, I was like, "Yeah, I'll catch you later." And then all I thought was. Duh! Double leg and my leg got stuck and it tore. Um, How do yeah. you deal with that, bro? Like someone who does that, like, were you, were you angry at the guy? You know what? I, I think, you know what? Alhamdulillah for Islam, bro. Is it? Yeah, I, I honestly, <laughs> I, I know, I know, I honestly, bro. Because it's like. You say Qadr Allah, my chef. Yeah, I because know, it's yeah. like, I, I, you can get, even like now recently, when I tore my hamstring again, I was like, it is what yeah. it is, man. Like, what, who am I going to, uh, who am I going to blame? Yeah, sir. Do you know what I mean? It is, I think it's just, it is what it is. And then, um, I think I'm mentally strong. So, um, you know what worries me, bro? It's the, when you're in your 60s and 70s. That's what worries me. Bro, I've seen 60s and 70 year olds, bro, and they don't do nothing and they're still walking around like they're limping and stuff, bro. At least I've got stories to tell on it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They got, they, I was like, how'd you do that? And he said, I was walking to Sainsbury's. <laughs> how'd you do that? <laughs> I was bending over. <laughs> now he said to me, how'd you do that? Yeah, I was fighting six man. <laughs> and the guy pulled my <laughs> Yeah, I got story to tell it. That's Rather, true, man. It, it, uh, you know what it is? Have you not seen after seeing everyone? You just fall apart. You fall apart anyway. So I rather have I rather just rock it till the wheels fall off, bro. And when the wheels fall off, then give me some wheels and I'll start rolling <laughs> with that as well. <laughs> that Terminator, bro. Like, like, uh, get all that. That's what I was saying, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. I said to Amir. I said to Amir. I go, bro. You know, uh, I rang him up. I said, Sheikh, I think I've torn my hamstring. Yeah. Go, you got any duct tape? <laughs> 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 but in all seriousness, like, because um, this is kind of the main topic of the of the podcast, really. Because when I spoke to you the other day, yeah, when I invited you on, I say invited you when I asked you to come on, 
Um, you're basically a co-host now. Yeah, <laughs> practically. You're a yeah, co-host, bro. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's about this whole, first, first things first is this mental health stuff that's been pushed in the media, bro. Like, it's a good thing, but I feel like it's gone on another, it's, it's taken this mad trajectory, yeah. But also like this whole thing about, you know, kids. Like I, I worry, man, like children and their, their, their resilience. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember like um, about 10 years ago, yeah, uh, I, I was approached by, well, we were, I was, I was tasked, yeah, with designing a course, yeah, for, for kids between the age of 16 to 25. 25 is not really a kid, but you know, like that, that age, I don't know. Yeah. And the, re, the, the, the whole point of the course, it was designed, it, it was based on research by this, this, um, I think it's called a think tank or something called New Philanthropy Capital, yeah. And they, what they did was they did research across the world. And because in the West here, yeah, what's happening is kids are losing. There's not that, when, when people go into the workplace, they don't have the required skills to thrive in the workplace. Not all kids, but if you look at, we're talking more people that in our circles. Yeah. People that we grew up in, in the areas that we, we, we grew up in. So what they did was they, they did research in India, Japan, uh, Europe, mainland Europe, UK and America. Yeah. And they kind of like um, identified key skills that is required. Yeah. So like, so I think, let me see if I can remember them. Yeah. So number one, yeah, was self-awareness. Yeah. So meaning that um, understanding yourself, like really who, who are you? What am I capable of? Um, how do I affect the world around me? Yeah. Uh, number two was resilience. So being able to take on and uh, things, um, being tough mentally, you know, we talked about like with your injuries and stuff like that. And even what martial arts does, yeah. Me mental toughness, um, uh, being able to work in a team. Um, do you know what? Let me see if I can bring it up here because uh, I'm doing it a disservice. I think I've got it here somewhere. Um, let me see. Uh, Mm, it's not, it's there's some of it is there. Uh, go back, go back, bro. Go down. Um, oh my God, I wish I could remember all of them, man, but they were, they were so important, bro. Like it was literally in doc, when I read that, when I read that, um, when I read that that report, it was like a, a small report. I was like, this is what we're missing. Mm. Um, being able to work as part of a team, being able to, to uh, being resilient, being self-aware, um, being independent as, so being independent, but also as working as a team. So you, you, you should be able to do, you know, switch between them. And um, so when I look at, my children, like the, the, the kids that are, they, the big one is resilience. Like being able, like they fold at any sort of pressure, they start to fold, they start to kind of go inwards. Yeah. Depression, uh, self-hate, um, like worrying what other people are thinking about you, all these things, yeah. That I would say is, a, is like an epidemic now yeah. within like, modern society. Yeah. And then, so that's why like, I want to talk to about this today with regards to why in, in the 21st century, kids should do something like, especially martial arts, football, basketball, these things are good, but combat sports brings a specific element. So that's why I wanted to kind of talk about that specific thing. Okay. Um, so, so you don't want kids uh, getting concussion falling on grass. <laughs> falling on what? Grass. 
<laughs> nowadays, exactly, yeah, but exactly. Now, but now, now exactly. these kids fall on grass, but they get concussion. You know what cracks me up though, bro? It's soft, bro. Have bro. you noticed that um, w- when you see when you see no, attitudes, like us, you, when you see attitudes towards football, for example, yeah. and towards something like wrestling or, or jujitsu or whatever, yeah, yeah, you get more injuries in football than you do in in wrestling, and I've seen crazy injuries, yeah, clashes, head, yeah. like, and, and I know now there's a massive conversation around concussions in football, mm. like about um, actually heading the ball, yeah, and I know, and I hope, hopefully, we can get Nasir back, yeah. Because I know there's this um, comments in, in the Premier League about, I think now, if you get a concussion, um, there's a mandatory kind of- Yeah, which is correct though. Which is what it, normally it should correct. happen. If yeah. you've got like, a concussion is an injury. Yeah, so, but there's different correct. types, isn't it? That's the thing. There's like, obviously you get knocked out completely. That's- But even, even getting, so like even like, there's things that we've learned over years yeah. about, about sparring and stuff as well. Like we used to go in- and smashed. I remember track. seeing your videos. Yeah, and stuff, yeah. yeah. No, I was there, bro. Yeah, even like, uh, yeah, you've seen some of the sparring. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. has been there a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> so just, um, and we were doing that like all the time. Yeah. So there's time. Do you feel like, do you there, feel like you got, time. you got some sort of CTE, bro? Yeah, there was time, there was time. I remember times I used to go home and forget stuff. Seriously? So, yeah, yeah, there was, there was, there was times, there was times that happened. <laughs> Then, it, then you just rest. You yeah. end up resting. But how about now? How about now? Yeah, now, now I have, um, but I have, I forget people all the time. <laughs> well, that's you, different, you, though. Bro, how many but times do you get punched in the face? <laughs> that's my choice. <laughs> What's that? Like, how many times do you get punched in the face? I've never seen you get punched in the face. Yeah, I give it out more than I get. Yeah, which is good. The, uh, like, so, but where does the concussion come from then? You getting hit? Isn't it? Yeah, but I don't see you getting hit. Yeah, but I'm, but, talk, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about myself, talking about other people. Like, <laughs> oh. Like, uh, but um, let's talk about you for a minute, yeah? yeah. Like, if you look at your career yeah. in, in, in striking specifically, yeah, yeah. yeah? Like how often would you get... That's what, bro, my head moves all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, I know, because you've got that the peekaboo uh, yeah. <laughs> style. Like, too. Bro, they ain't touching me, bro. When you miss, you go to sleep. <laughs> that's, that's the, you know what it is? It's, that's uh, the whole point of uh, fighting. Martial, and that's, yeah, and it's the whole thing hit is, and not get I, have, hit, I have an aggressive counter style. That's my style. Yeah, so um, I learned very, yes, I will, my style is to take and give kind of thing, but um, it's an aggressive counter style. I make you miss. And when you miss, I make you pay. Yeah. yeah. And then, so my, my, my damage isn't that much. I don't, I've never been. Yeah, because I've, I've had meetings with you and you're, you're not punchy at all, bro. No, no. Actually quite sharp. There's people, there's people, there's people I know that have sparred. Um, and I'm very much like, yeah, you need to move. Like yeah. either your feet or your head, move something. Don't stand there and take licks. Well, I know you're very specific about, especially with your students, because these guys got to go work the next day. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, you whole, actually get uh, angry. I actually had this whole yeah. thing yesterday. Um, there's an amateur kickboxing fight coming up and some of them, so they put up in a group who wants to fight. And then some of the guys, yeah, I'll fight, I'll fight. And I was, I didn't say nothing. Came in to train the next day and I said, uh, do you know what style this is? Because it's like, you know, you got like continuous K1, full contact. So they, they have different things, yeah? So I asked the guy, do you know what like continuous? He says, no coach, I don't understand. So I go, why are you entering? Mm. Why Why did you feel the need? And he goes, oh, I got gassed. And I was like, <laughs> why? Why are you getting, what, what is there to prove? Then I spoke to the coach and I said to him as well, I go, these guys. What coach? Sorry. Uh, just one of the assistant coaches. Oh, uh, like, your coach. Yeah, yeah, one of the assistant coaches. I just said to him, I go, you need, you have, you have a duty of care to these guys, yeah. and that's number one. I will never put anyone into fight if I don't feel they're ready. And also, I look at their profession. So if the guy's got to go work the next day and he's going in with black eyes or yeah, that's busted long. nose, even bro, sometimes like Mashallah and Lombard, one of the guys trains with his model, yeah. And he's got good, good job kind of thing, modeling. So I, I'm very much anti striking to his face. I make him wear a full head guard with the bar across his face. He wants to enter competitions. I keep holding him back. No, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. Uh, because these are amateur fights. You're paying mm. them to fight. Why do you want to enter and lose your livelihood if you get your nose busted and stuff? So it's just like little. And what are you trying to prove? Yeah. I, yeah. I get, and it's like, he. He's a little bit older, so is is there is there any point going down that route? Because you're not trying to turn pro. Yeah. So there's other competitions that we can do that that can look we can look up. And I think, um, and they're still young. Some of them, like we can we can we have to guide them a little bit. 
Mm. Um, yeah, that's it. I, I think uh, as a coach, that's that's my that's my duty mainly, and also the like what you're saying, the mental. This is look our mantra at uh, the academy is life is hard. We build strong people. That's I think. Yeah, it took me a long time to develop that, but I was just looking at myself and I was like, that's really what you're about. Like when when I, when I meet people. Um, they know me from fighting and also the injuries. And it's like, oh, you're still training? Yeah, yeah, I'm still training. So I think that's what it helped me do, uh, helped me uh, get f- get through my training and stuff. Also, uh, people might know or not know that I used to run two businesses. I had my gyms and we ended up closing down and then getting through that, that whole yeah. process of lo- losing a business, closing down and stuff. How did you mentally? I didn't know what I was going to do after where my next paycheck was going to come from. Even even when I had the gym, so I had no, we weren't making... You were telling me the cleaner was getting paid more than bro, the you. Cleaner right? was, the cleaner was getting more paper than me, bro. <laughs> That's why I waited outside and robbed her. <laughs> Don't tell her that. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Sorry, yeah? <laughs> it was me. <laughs> no, it was... Uh... Yeah, so then that whole time, four years, I did not take a wage. And what people saw on the outside was this successful business and you're making you they think you're making money and bro you're broke mm. like you're broke you got no no money in your pocket and it's like uh but again i know a lot of people would crumble in that situation this is it bro and that's why when i talk to people i i never ever looked at, at the business as failing if that makes sense yeah like sorry i never felt of myself as a failure the business failed and it's like, oh, okay, you lost that. No problem. On to the next. On to the next. I remember listening to this uh, guy talk once and um, he said that being poor is a, being poor is a, a mentality. So he goes, if you like, he goes that like, if you have no money, you're broke. But being poor is a mentality. So if you always feel like I live in the ghetto, I ain't going to get out of the ghetto because I live in the ghetto. So you, you're, you've, Develop this mind frame of you're gonna stay there. Basically. You're gonna stay there. You're never gonna move out. You can't succeed. You can't do anything. Um, and Hamla, I've never had that mentality. I always dreamed of going places, seeing things. Yeah, I think it's glorified as well, bro. What's that? I feel like the ghetto. Just that mentality. That, yeah, yeah, of course it's pumped. It's pumped in it, bruv. It's 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 glorified. And what's funny now is, um, people talk when you look at how we consume information, yeah? Like you look at Instagram, everything is instant, yeah? And fake. And fake, yeah. yeah. And 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 like I was speaking to my son the other day, I said, it's easy to say something. So you can say sorry with your mouth, mm. but if you, if you don't prove it with your actions, then you're not really sorry, bro. Yeah, yeah. If, 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 if you say that you're a hard worker, but you don't work hard, yeah. you're just saying it. Yeah. So a lot of the times what happens is people trick themselves. They start posting these motive. You know, when I see people, this for me, when I see someone's account and they're posting these things. Motivation talks? Yeah, yeah. Like, a, I feel like, you know, there might be something wrong in your life, bro. Because- But, but to, to me, it's like, you know, you know, sometimes I think they're telling, they're trying to tell themselves. So, this is like, it. They're trying to tell themselves. Yeah. It's for, putting for, it out there. It's putting it out there. But like, not, not a judgment thing. It's yeah. sometimes what is going through your mind for yeah. you to do that. Yeah. And, and for- I think, you know, I, I, was, I was actually looking through Instagram and I was looking at everyone's page and everyone's become like... A, a guru. No, but everyone's become like a, a movie star or movie person or an actor in their own little world. Yeah. And that's and, I, and that's, what it's, that's what's happened. And that's what it's developed. Instagram has become this thing. Like I see, uh, I don't know, women modeling their clothes in their bedroom, in the car park, in the bedroom, in the car park. And it's like, you can see, and when you read the comments, it's like the same sort of people. Oh, you look like really good and all this stuff. And it's like, they they need that to help them to feel good about themselves. I think that I f- that in itself is a problem. So I, f- I found that that report I was yeah, telling you about. Yeah. So I was Googling while you were chatting, bro. Yeah, thanks. I was listening as thanks well, obviously. Listening. I was listening, I was listening. Bro, bro stop it now. <laughs> <laughs> man, man's just not, he's Googling. <laughs> not Googling, I was, I was going to my, uh, to my Google Drive, yeah? <laughs> so there was like, there was six. So it, it, it's uh, being self-aware, yeah. 
So it says, takes responsibility for themselves and others. Yeah. Exhibits self-control, accountability for one's action, does not shift blame and recognizes their own strengths or weaknesses. Yeah. So that's number one. Yeah. Yeah. So, they, they, so, so, um, I'll read you what this, this report is about. Yeah. So the UK job market has changed dramatically over the past 20 years. Many young people, particularly from those disadvantaged backgrounds, which is people that we grew up with, yeah, yeah. including ourselves, yeah, yeah. Um, find it increasingly difficult to make a successful transition from education to employment. Um, at the same time, employers express concerns about the level of training and support they need to give young recruits. Now, you've, you've, you're, you're an employer, I'm an employer, yeah? That's the one thing we talk about. There's not enough quality people to, to, to actually recruit. There's a lot of unemployment, there's, there's un unemployment, but there's, there's jobs. That's the, the funny thing is there's jobs out there, but the people to fill those jobs, the quality people, is very, very few. Um, it says working, da, 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 da. there's six, so, okay. So the first one was self-awareness. Second one is being receptive. Oh my God, this is so important, yeah. So it says, <laughs> writing to address, willing to address your weaknesses. Yeah. Uh, takes feedback and advice. Yeah. That is massive. like massive. massive yeah. Open to new ideas. Yeah. And working in different ways, open-minded, patient and flexible. Yeah. Uh, second, uh, third one, bruv. When I said to, driven, bruv, displays positive attitude. Yeah. Uh, applies oneself consistently. Yeah. Not volume, little bit every day. Like I can, he's going to come nine o'clock, 8.59 is in the office, bro. Yeah. 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 Uh, reliable. Pff, that is a commodity in today's world. Yeah. I honestly, the amount of people that have come through the gym and in, in when I've hired or worked with, I can count how many reliable people there are. Yeah. And you, I'm sure you can attest to that as well. Uh, be motivated, punctual, well organized, hardworking, and goes the extra mile. So not just does what, you know, what is required, goes the extra mile. Uh, for, uh, number four is self-assured. So it has good levels of self-esteem, uh, willing to ask questions and seek more information, uh, can work alone without clear direction, displaying physical signs of self-esteem, such as a firm handshake. We talk about this. You see, especially kids, bro. You shake, they, they don't look in the eye, they get floppy, like, oh, wrist. even some guys, man. Um, Re resilience. I won't say that. Everyone's looking at me. <laughs> okay, this 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 is the bit like what the topic of today's podcast. Yeah, resilience. Yeah, copes with rejection and setbacks because you spoke about this about losing the gym. Learns from open mistake uh, uh, from mistakes. Open to constructive criticism. You don't crumble at when someone tells you, "Listen, fix up, bro." Mm. Do you get me? Mm. Um, determined to overcome ob obstacles. You got an obstacle. You Run don't kind it. of like fold. Run yeah. Through it. You go through it or climb it or whatever it is. Through it, bro. Through it, bro. <laughs> Perseveres and does not panic under pressure. Yeah. And the last one was in being informed. Having an understanding of what you're doing. So whatever job you're doing, whatever. Reading, learning. Read, yeah. learn yeah, about yeah. that thing. Yeah, be, don't be. Uh, yeah. Listen. I come up with who I re uh, listened to on uh, like on one of, he goes, try and be an expert in something. Yeah. Like go and read 15, 20 books on that specific thing. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Do you see what I'm saying? So these six things, um, I built a course around it. Yeah. It was an 11 week course. It was like a boot camp. See, a lot of that, um, a lot of that stuff. Uh, did the people know that you do two brothers? No. Okay. Well, so, I kind of spoke about it a little bit, but oh, I, I'll I will talk about go on, two yeah. brothers. So, okay, go on. so it doesn't sound like you're I'm bragging. Yeah, bragging. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll talk about he owns <laughs> pay me later, yeah. I'll pay you later. All right, cool. So um I think I had when I had the gym, Mohammed was starting off. I just started off. Twenty sixteen. You, you didn't start off. You it was before. Remember we you met me before Oh yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes, so yes, he, yes. He didn't he didn't uh start two brothers, which is a business solutions company. And I, I had the gym and then we met and we was talking and all this stuff. And, he, and then you were saying, oh, I, I want to leave my job and I want to yeah, start this yeah. company. And I was like, go for it. 
Yeah, go for yeah, it, yeah, yeah. go for it, go for it, go for it. So then you end up going for it. Yeah, and then this transition actually works at a good time. So because having... actually, can I just give a bit of detail? Go because what I tell you, like, because you've you, you kind of smoothed past a lot of it. Right. So what I did was five people I called. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zach was one of them. Okay. You were one of them. Yeah, Emil was one of them. My dad was one of them. Yeah, my father-in-law was one of them. I yeah. think my mum was one of them. Yeah, but um, obviously I spoke to my missus as well. Yeah, yeah. So there's five people that. I thought, before I make a decision, let me get an idea from everyone. And, and the thing is, I think for me, I'm a very headstrong person from young, mm. yeah? I made a lot of mistakes because of that. Mm. A lot of mistakes because I thought, you know, when you're a creative person, yeah? And I'm not trying to blow my home. Wait, wait, sometimes that's a, that's a, you get, you become tunnel vision and you don't listen to people. And that was my biggest problem as growing up. And I made a lot of mistakes because of that. Um, so I thought, you know what? This is a big decision. I'm going. I'm not going to make a decision until I speak to everyone. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a very important thing. Yeah. yeah. Because before I would make my decision, and then I'd go and speak to people that would reaffirm my decision. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So I called you up, and then you said to me on the phone, you said, "Listen." He he said, "Do you fit? Are you going to work hard to make it?" That's what he said to me. He said, "Are you gonna? Are you gonna put the work in?" And I go, yeah, man, go, then then do it. You don't overthink it, man, because yeah, yeah. oh, it's only if you're not willing to put the work in that you should be worried. Yeah. So I was thinking, I was like, okay, okay, that's one. Amir goes to me, he goes, I, and you said, look, whatever you need, I'll support you in any way, mm -hmm. yeah? So I got, I had a bit of, uh, and that's important to have people around you that that know you, but also willing to support you and also call you out on your BS as well, bro. Yeah. yeah? So Amir said to me, listen, you've been looking, because I've been talking to him about this a long time and, and yourself as well. Mm. So he said, you go for it. My father said the same thing. He said the same thing. My dad said the same thing. I was like, you know, I'm getting a unanimous thing. But, um, and that, that, do you remember why I called you though? Uh, okay, so let me explain. Let me explain the story quickly, yeah? I can't remember. My car got stolen. Do you remember? Was he trying to sell me drugs? <laughs> No, no, my car got stolen, yeah? yeah? And I had an altercation with my manager at the time. Do you okay. remember? I can't remember. So what happened was I called her in the morning. I said, my car got stolen. I can't come into work. I have to sort this out. Yeah. Basically, she said to me, once you've sorted it out, come back to the office. Okay. That's, that's something normal. Yeah, like yeah. I get it. But I took it as a slight because I'm a very hard worker, yeah? yeah. Like why don't you just... In my head, I was like, I've got more important things to think about. It's like, yeah, cool. Chill today. Just chill today, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. your car's stolen. Like yeah. how, because I had to go pick up my kid. It was, it was like a headache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of things built up to that point. It wasn't like, um, so I was like, that's it, bro. I'm done. I'm done. Like I'm done. Like um, people telling me where to be, when to do something, how to do something. I know it sounds a bit but I was further along in my career, bruv. And I remember listening to a Dame Dash interview. You know Dame Dash? Yeah, yeah. And he's, he goes, how can another man, he goes, why are we spending the days, daytime with, with people we, that, that order us around and the night times with people that we love? He goes, those people are sleeping, bruv. My kids are sleeping. Yeah. So that kind of was playing in my mind. I was like, I spent most of my time nine to five in an office. And when I come home, I'm smashed. I don't get to see my kids. I don't get... mm. So anyway, like, um, yeah. So <laughs> you, you told me push the button and then oh, you can carry on from there, bro. What were you going to say? <laughs> yeah. So then, um, yes, I was, so I met you at uh, that time. Yeah. And then I think that then we decided, then Mohammed op opened Two Brothers, uh, which is a business solution yeah. kind of thing. And, they, and So they, you're my first customer, bro. Yeah, I was, your, I was your first yeah. customer. And then, uh, we worked on we worked on my gym and we said, okay, look, this is the we need to change the model. And I remember we used to stay up till three, four o'clock in yeah, the morning. It's crazy, bro. Yeah, because it was a lot of like what you knew, like man, that was yeah. that was going for a hard time that time. And then we end up um staying to two, three o'clock and, and and we changed the whole So the whole purpose of the project was you said to me basically, I want to be able to run my business anywhere in the world. No, it was it wasn't it wasn't even that. I think we no. had a lot of um we need to streamline the business. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, but we, remember we had um, 
we were still using dated systems. Yeah, exactly. And then you put the you put Google Drive in. Yeah, and, then yeah, we had, and, then, yeah. and then we had and we faced so much backlash from it's staff. From staff and yeah, why yeah. are we doing this? I don't want to do this. And it was like just constant. But it was a for for you. It was a case of you were working hard. Yeah, and I was I was just trying to, to just to maintain. Uh, maintain. It, like it was it was, it was a drowning, bro. It was, yeah. it was drowning. hard, not smart. Yeah, yeah. It was just hard. It, and the thing is, like, what happened, Zach? It was like, you know, when you got one or two or three people working hard out of ten. Mm. And it's like you're you're never gonna yeah. win. Yeah, it's literally you know it's it's too hard. It's too hard. Yeah. But I was t- I was there from six in the morning sometimes to eleven o'clock at night, and then uh, teaching classes back to back. Yeah. So I was trying to carry this whole place, and then you needed and you just needed someone to help you. Like, I think you know, one thing that I realized from speaking to you, bro, like people do see you from the outside. Do you see this guy MMA fighter? You know, he's got all this stuff. Yeah. But when I when I was like when I first met you. No, when I started working with you, I was like, I don't mean, <laughs> bro, don't take this the wrong way. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this guy's very intelligent, bro. Uh, <laughs> but not not because I thought you were dumb. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah, Did no, you see okay. what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Like, you're, when, I'm talking, when, you, when it comes to fighting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Because I, I, I wanted to choose it wise. He timed that so nice. <laughs> he built me up. I just dropped me there, bro. I like, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me like let because, him laugh, let him laugh. because it sounds bad, but it's not because like no one would look at you like a businessman because yeah. they see you as a fighter, bro. Yeah. That's what I mean. Okay, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. But when I worked with because obviously you've got a business degree, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't know if a lot of people know this, bro. You've got a business degree, but also it's probably development. Oh, is it probably development? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, same thing, bro. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but but when when we when we started speaking, yeah. Uh, we were on the same wavelength yeah. about syst- processes and systems and 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 policies and procedures and uh, workflows and all this stuff, yeah. So you had it kind of like re- and my thing was bringing the technical side of it. Yeah. You just needed someone to implement what you were thinking, bro. Yeah. You didn't need someone to come to it. This is how you should do it because yeah. that's, not- that's 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 why we worked. That's why yeah. we, that's why we worked well, and uh, that's why I've, I, I've always I always recommend uh, I always recommend you because. Um, I find that anyone that's interest, uh, anyone wants their business to move forward and looking to streamline and do technical stuff, they need to get someone like you involved. Because what happens, like like yourself, I'm creative. I'm the creative mind. I'm the visionary. I, yeah. I look at okay. I I want to implement this type of stuff. Then I always need. Oh, then when I spoke to you, it was like, oh man, where you been? Yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing. And this is then what we done. We streamlined the business, didn't we? We went down. I went had two floors. So my my gym was fifteen thousand square foot. We went down to one floor. I streamlined the business, changed the model. Um, we done the whole HR, uh, HR uh, exercise. Remember, exercise. you know what else was good about you, though, bro? You weren't um, stuck in your ways, innit? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Because you know that's what surprised that me we as well. Have now, bro, they're just like they don't want to change. Bro. Yeah, but Zach, the thing is that I remember speaking to someone whose ba- uh, business failed. Yeah, mm. and to this day, they still blame other people. So, which is the point yeah. you brought up, yeah? yeah? They still like, oh no, but you know that guy that was working, he, he didn't do this. And you know, this person, he didn't. And I was like, mm, where where are you to blame in this? Yeah. No, no, I, I done work. No, because it, even, even though um, my business failed, there was elements of it that I could have done better. Yeah. And it was, um, there, there, was lo- there was loads of things that I could have done better myself where... I was wearing too many hats. That's that's what it was. Like I was the, but we literally, I remember this, uh, my funny story, yeah. Um, this woman came in and she started mo- like complaining about something, yeah. And she was cussing, da, da, da. And I said to her, I was trying to be really nice to her. But I, to be honest, I don't sit behind reception desks because like, <laughs> I'm not good, yeah. Like I'm not good because like I, I can't. Part of yeah, bro, I'm just like, because I don't, I don't, I don't like people disrespecting other people. Yeah. And what happened, she didn't know that I owned the place. So most people didn't know I owned the place. And then the way she was talking, I was like, right, you're, you're rude, man. <laughs> and I was I was looking at her, and then she goes, and I said to her, tough like I don't remember what I had going to argue with her. Then she said, oh, I want to see the manager. And I was like, Yeah, okay, cool. I went behind the room, I tucked my t-shirt in, come back out, and I said, What? Well, what you want? <laughs> but there's a few times yeah, I've walked in. in I said, Yeah, what? What you want? There's a few times as well, bruv. I've walked in. And I've actually had to go, okay, bro, I beg you go yeah, somewhere. Yeah, but, but exactly. Because yeah, you're going to knock someone out, yeah, bro. Yeah, but it's true though, bro. Imagine this, yeah. This is, this is the stuff, blatant disrespect. Like I, and the thing is though, 
That's why I have got love. I used to have love for my um, employees. Yeah. Like anyone that's working reception, I never used to let people palm off. I, I would bang people for that, bro. Yeah, yeah. So I remember once you was there. I remember you came in for a day and he goes, oh, let me just work on the desk. Yeah, I just wanted to observe. Yeah. You to, but you was on the desk. You set yeah. some, we we done a free day pass or something. So we had some guy come from another gym and then Mohammed goes, yeah, have a free day pass. And then uh, he started training. Then he then he came back after 10 minutes and he goes, have you got any water? So we have, we sell water. Bro, bottles of water, 50p. You've just got a free day pass. And he goes, I don't want to buy a bottle. So I was looking at him. Bro, so straight away, my, my I'm already... <laughs> Man's stretching out, bro. I got my band, I got my bands up, I'm warming up my shoulders. <laughs> what, time, what time am I on? And then... Uh, then Mohammed goes, and then he goes, and he got angry and he just like kind of walked off. All right, cool. And then he goes, oh, what about there? Can I go get water from there? There's a calf, but it was locked. We had work going on. And he goes, can I go in the calf? And I was like, mm, nah, because we've got work going on. So I'm sitting there, but I look on the camera. This guy's bopped in after telling him no in the calf to go get water. He's put the tap on, thinking, but I gripped him. Oh up, my God, I remember. And I'm pulling him out. I like, sorry, guys. <laughs> I said, don't make it. Guys, if you want better stories, yeah? Go Patreon, bro. Go Patreon. <laughs> it's gonna be not uncut, even it's not set up yet, un- but... Uncut version, yeah? So I pull him out, and the man's like, what are you doing? I was like, bruv, I've told this guy, don't go <laughs> nice in there. Well. He blatantly went in there. What type of member is he going to be? Yeah, I don't want this guy, bro. Go away, man. Yeah. I don't want you here. You're getting dust, bro. Yeah, but you, you done that in the wrong gym, though. Yeah, but that's the thing, innit? That's, 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 I'm that's not the what I'm one. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't. About, yeah, no, I'm not uh, the one, bro. One time. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Do you story. know how many... St- we could do a whole episode on gym <laughs> stories, bro. This was funny, yeah? I was teaching a jiu-jitsu class. And remember, we got we had four studios. So imagine four classes are going on. So you yeah, had yeah. like a spinning class, body pump or whatever going on. Then the gym was busy. Seven o'clock, boxing circuit class. One of the girls that was working, so she went upstairs to, to check something. As she's coming out, the man in the sauna, this man's, uh, he comes out and he goes, excuse me, can you put the, the saunas switched off? Can you put it on? But imagine this is peak time, seven o'clock. So imagine everyone coming in for their class and stuff. So she goes, I'll be back in two minutes. Comes back downstairs. She's obviously forgot yeah, yeah, because, yeah. or she just got uh, busy, yeah. with, busy with work, yeah? This guy's come downstairs. This, oh, sorry, bro. This guy's going to come downstairs and something's happened. She's running to the, the fight, fight zone and she's going, okay, okay, you come outside. And I said, oh, what's up? And then she goes, oh, this guy, he's lost it, man. He's thinking, I come outside, bro. You know, all the trackers, the protein bars, oh, he, he threw everything. everything on the floor. So bro, that's the first thing I saw, <laughs> yeah? So this guy mm. tried to explain to me, you know, the sauna. And I was like, why is my trackers on the floor? <laughs> oh, so he's, and he's like, no, but you know, I said, why is my trackers on the floor? So I got to him, pick everything. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we are live. <laughs> Yes, Bruce Buffer. <laughs> and I go to him, pick every single tracker up. So he's putting them back. I no, said, no, he yeah, didn't pick it up. I made, I made it pick it up. I made, Imagine I made, how moist he felt, like. No, no, bruv. But it ain't finished, bruv. I ain't finished. You know what I did to him? Because even that, bruv, you just violated someone as well. Yeah, yeah. Like you, what you, I, I can imagine what you just done to that girl. Like how you made her feel. What you done, like, or you bullied her. And it's her. a girl as well. You've bullied her. Yeah, you've bullied so, her. But yeah. even if it was a man, you've bullied her, yeah? yeah? So basically you just threw her from the floor, then you had your hissy fit. And then I've come out and now you're trying to be nice. And I was like, pick every single tracker up. <laughs> and then put it back. And you know, you know, you're just putting it back quickly. I said, no, no, no. You know the T, they all have to be aligned. <laughs> no, bro. Well, no. Like I've done it, I made him put every single tracker back. And then I said, get out. Get Bruh, out. Get out you know. I said, get out. And I said, I, I don't want you in here. Cause it was like, and I think this is what, this is why, bro, this is why eventually I started closing the gym was, People we, murder scenes, bro. Yeah, but people didn't understand. We had a Russian cowboy. I'll tell you about that story next time. Yeah? What? <laughs> a Russian cowboy? Yeah, you don't even know, bro. Okay, good. I was butt naked in the shower and I was trying to kick him out of the gym and he's washing himself, looking at me. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, Where'd the cowboy out. come in? He's the cow- he used to wear a cowboy outfit. He had cowboy boots. But imagine, so I was trying to kick him out and he's going cowboy boots and he's butt naked. And I'm like, Get out. Was and- he like, yeah, we found out later. He, oh, he's not well. He wasn't well. <laughs> yeah. But he but he was like, it was naughty though. He was not naughty. He used to rob people in the area. Okay, right. Um, right. Yeah, so oh, too many too many funny things. And bro. the worst thing is, you know your Shadow Heath? Yeah. 
It's like there's the A406, yeah? Yeah. It, it just ferries in. The A4, everyone, the, everyone. A12. A12. Bosa, Dagner. Yeah, bro. So we got close, bro, everything. That's... Yeah. Bro, oh, so, Lord. so I think, you know, so that time I met, when we when we started working together, was that time of, yeah, I, I can't keep dealing with, like you said, bro, I was actually at the point where- You were out, bro. Yeah, I was out. You were out, bro. I, 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 and I remember what we done, yeah? Are you you was there, that, remember? Yeah. I said to Mohammed, March. <laughs> 2009, yeah. if yeah. it's not done by this date <laughs> and it's not doing what I want, I'm closing. March 31st come, yeah? I rang my hand He said the next day. I was he, like, huh? He, I, he, and I, he picked up, I go, but it's closed. And he's like, what? I go, I closed the gym. And he's like, nah. I said, I told you 31st. <laughs> you know the worst thing about it, bro? The week before, I think two weeks before he just rebuilt the shower, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think, I think the next day he flew out to Morocco. I was like, yeah, yeah, I went, yeah, I went, oh I went, yeah, you went oh, missing. Thing. Yeah, I went. <laughs> So I've done with you lot. You bro. actually called me from the taxi, bruv. Did I call you from the taxi? I'm pretty sure you called me from the yeah, taxi yeah. on the way to the airport. But I remember he was in shock. Huh? And I said to him, I was like, I told you, bruv. Uh, 31st, I've done. I've had enough, yeah. bro. It's my stat. <laughs> I used to actually get, um, you know when you go, like, I was there for, I remember I, I used to come in every single day for two weeks. Because when I first started working, because what I didn't want to do, yeah, I didn't want to come in and say, right, this needs to be changed, this needs to be changed, yeah. whatever, yeah. I thought, you know what, bruv, I don't know your business. I don't know. Like, I know what, how to run a gym. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know how you run it and how, and because you told me all the, all the issues. Yeah. But I thought, let me just work as a frontline. You have to see it to believe it, bro. Yeah. See it for myself. But I used to get anxiety coming in, bro. Why? Because it's the people, bro. Yeah. They were difficult. But remember when we changed, um, you guys used, um, um, body. yeah. Yeah. So, we we switched over to my body. Yeah, we, we done it when you was there, innit? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. we we switched over to my body, and there was this woman that used to come in on a Sunday. Oh my so God, I remember yeah. Enver, he was one of, one of the guys that used to work for us. So he 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 used to say to her, listen, we need to transfer you over to the new system. I don't want to. So he he went. This went on for Probably ages. Was painful, bro. Then he goes to me, Khalid. This woman doesn't want to change over. So I come in. Now, bro, it's like the buck stops with me, innit? Like, you're going to try, you, you need to, I said, hi, how you doing? You're right. You need to transfer over to the new system. But I don't want to. Okay, see that door? <laughs> and it's like, what do you want me to say to you? You're either going to do it or, or don't come. But you know what? But what shocked me, okay, like, bro, is I'll, I'll make a, I'm going to make an exception for you. Yeah, well, uh, you want to pay directly into my, you're going to do it, bro. Simple. Because we get in the gym as well, bro. Yeah. yeah? Like, but I'm, I'm like, to I me. Wish, I wish you could. Like have something that you could just like hit them with or something. Because I, I'm looking Without at myself. Jail. I'm looking at myself. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. I buy a coffee, yeah. I buy a coffee and they forget to put honey in it, for yeah. example. Yeah. I don't go back and ask for honey. That's just, to, or like if it's busy or, or, or like, you know, push. If there's a line and I've gone, I'm not going to push in front of the line and say, oh, you, you forgot my honey. That's just the type of person bro, I am, bro. bro. Right I'm, or wrong. I'm not going to go to the shop that like, we only take card, but I, I want to pay cash. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just that's not that guy, bro. But that's card. what they do, though. Yeah, like, they do that, bro. They do that. I don't want to pay. I don't want to pay. And it's like, okay, but I don't get it. You're not going to <laughs> come here no more. And then, why I'm sorry. You, why are you still here? Yeah. So don't come here no more. Move. Kind of thing. It's it's just like, but again. That conversation is it's weird. Because it kind of like, like, you say to them, okay, you need to transfer over because you don't exist on another system. On that, that system doesn't exist anymore. You have, I don't want to. Bruv. Then you just have this awkward silence like, okay. So we're here now. We're, we're here in this now. room. We're in this room. <laughs> yeah. Now what? <laughs> now what? And it's like, where, where does the conversation stop? And then the, 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 the lasso starts. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing, bro. <laughs> It's true, isn't it? Oh, no, bro. It's you have nice. to give him, like, bro, then he's a third show or something, bro. Oh, bro. bro. Because, because, because that, we've become running but, the business for 10 years. You've been running for how long uh, so before you closed for, it? So I had I had um, the LDG for 13 years and I had Romford Gym. Romford Gym was a whole number. Oh, my God. Bro. Oh, my days. It was bro. a hotspot uh, hot for EDL, bro, that uh, place. Yeah, it bro. was. It was a hot, hot spot for EDL. <laughs> and and, 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 and the, guy, the guys in it, and even... Um, even the way people used to talk to you there, like, I remember one guy, I was talking to Erfat. I mean, Erfat was in the training, we were looking at some work and to do stuff. And they must have thought I was off the boat or something, bro. <laughs> and he come up and he goes, I was talking to Erfat in, in between conversation. And then he's like, uh, yeah, mate, you know, uh, you know, Machino. And I was like, turn around, I said, I ain't the one, bro. <laughs> 
Wrong guy. <laughs> Go away outside. When I finish, I will come talk to you. Can I, can I Don't pick ever, up? Bro. Can I pick up or something? Go so on. this is the whole thing about this whole Ukraine refugee stuff, yeah? Yeah. Because now, uh, watch, watch me weave it in, yeah? I see how you yeah. see it, how bro. I'm gonna be weave it see in, how, bro. That was good, bro. Yeah, I see how I'm gonna weave it in, stuff, like, bro. Because this is the thing, yeah. They, this is I've always wondered, bro. Like this whole thing about equality, yeah. I know, it don't exist. It does, bro. We know what you think of us, bro. Yeah, it don't exist. We know. Hey, BBC. We know what you think but, of us, bro. Just say it. Just say it. Just say your second class citizens. Yeah, cool. Just if I could play the intro to hit him up, I'll do it right now, bro. That's what was playing in my head right now. <laughs> that's what I said, man. Make it 18. <laughs> that's what we should do. That's that's if you if you if you know what I'm talking about, two pack hit him up, play the intro. That's what I think every time I watch BBC News. Because uh, watching, because I saw it when I was at your gym, bro. Because you're it's Romford, bro. That's yeah. like EDL country, bro. It's weird. It's like, you know, you had lovely people. This one, it's, it's, it's a split it's, personality, bro. Yeah, it's like yeah. you have really, really nice people there. And then you have people that talk to you. <clears throat> and again, but this this is what I, this is the problem. What you're talking about, even the resilience, all this stuff. Yeah. People allow other people to talk to them that way. Where, I so this guy, this guy, I know he's probably had these conversations with my staff members. yeah, yeah. yeah who were uh, ethnic minority people as well. And we had mixed cut, we had like, bro, we had everyone working there. So it was like, as long as you could do the job. So I, I know, but even, even more, it was like a, you're a receptionist. Yeah. And I'm going to talk to you. Cause there's I'm, layers in it. Yeah. I'm going to talk. Yeah. Cause I had another guy, uh, even in Chadwell Heath branch. Um, and I remember this conversation. I was getting ready for training to go do my training. And another guy walked in and he just bopped into the gym. No, hello, like no membership number. So one of the guys working, he goes, oh, excuse me, can you come back please? Uh, we need your membership number. He said, what membership number? And he goes, yeah, your membership number for this gym? Like your, we need it. Like he said, <laughs> I don't have one. And he said, oh, what's your name? He goes, you should know it. And I was looking. Oh, you want beef, like, this yeah, guy, really, like, He wants that, beef. But you, know, but you know, that, cause that's me I, in my head, I'm thinking, I'm gonna let him deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you're being awkward. Yeah. Cause that's easy. No, no, you want beef, bro. That's what you're I'm saying. Being yeah. long, you're being bro. very awkward. Yeah. So yeah. then he, then I was, okay. And then I'm, I'm sitting there, don't say nothing, don't say nothing. Just pack your gloves in your bag. Don't use it on his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so the guy's, and the guy's been so polite and the guy was sitting, like the, our desk was high. So he looks, he looked, so the receptionist looks small and the guy's standing over him. Cause he was sitting down, right? Yeah, because he's yeah. sitting down and, and the guy's standing over him. And I could see, you know, the demeanor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's that bullying tactics, isn't it? So he goes to him, uh, look, just give me your name and I can find you. He said, why didn't you send the card to my house? And that's, then the guy goes, then I butted in. I said, look, we don't send the cards to, to your house because anyone can pick it up and use your membership. So when you come in here, we give you your card. Then he says, uh, then he just started piping up about something. Then he, then he starts swearing at the guy. He goes, uh, I I pay 36 pound a month for I do this. And I was like, yeah, so? <laughs> what you think because you pay money? Wait, wait, wait. Where's Bane? What's the good? I've given you a small fortune. <laughs> and the guy goes, so Bane goes to him and that gives you power over me? Straight up, <laughs> straight up. That's what it is. 100% bro. Up. So I, that's when I butted in. Like I was like, Ooh, stop. Did that. you have the, <gasps> yeah, yeah. I was, was it, was it? You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it. So I said Molded to- Molded by it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I go to him, hold tight. I said to him, just wait. I said to him, uh, I said to the guy, this is actually a comedy show, bro. Cause I'm very, I'm very good with the, the popo as well, bro. <laughs> so he, uh, so he started piping up and I was like, listen, just because you're paying us money, it don't mean that you you can talk to people how you want to talk to how you talk to them. And to be honest, I ain't want people like you in the, in the gym from the from the from the get go. You're being an idiot. He asked you for your name, you want to give it, and you're out of your feet. And then who are you? Who are you? I said, don't worry about who I am. You don't need to know who I am. I said, I'll tell you what you can do is leave the gym though. No, I'm gonna call the police. Go on, call the police. Was he a chap? No, nah, it was some it was some Asian guy. I said to you, everything is to do with like you know, so people have this thing like. If they're, if they're paying you, you can see it's like authority thing. 
Yeah. Some people like if they're paying you money and you can tell like he was But no, but can I say something though? It depends who what establishment it is. Yeah, again, bro. He ain't doing you. that in no, no, uh in, a, in Virgin it. Active, bro. No, no, but bruv, listen. It, he didn't do it here either. Because yeah. when he started piping up, <laughs> but he's lucky I didn't lock the doors, <laughs> which I've done. <laughs> which we've done. <laughs> and bruv, their face changes like <laughs> huh? <turn> into <laughs> I can't leave. <laughs> no. You see that bit out of, um, remember um, Bronx Tale? Do you remember Bronx Tale? I've seen Bronx Tale, yeah. Yeah, yeah. remember when the bikers come in the, in the, in the bar? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, can you leave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you leave? No, nah, we don't leave. Okay, then, cool. Locks the door. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere now. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's what used to happen. So then, um, so then, he, then, then he called the police. Police come. I went, and then what I do is, I'm going to give my secret away. What I do, I fire them up a little bit, the, the guys. I get them a bit hyped up. He goes, get me out. So move, move, move. I start hyping them up. So they start shouting even more. Car! They start shouting. Then the police come. Then I just stay calm. And I was like, I don't know what's going on, bro. So this guy's just acting crazy here. <laughs> the police you know? actually came. The police and they- and What then, a waste then, of time, then bro. The police yeah, but that's what happened. The police came to me, said to me, well, who are you? I said, I'm the owner. This guy didn't have a card. I told him to leave the mem leave thing. We canceled his membership and he doesn't want to leave the premises. Then the guy goes, please don't switch this. I was like, because he's going, he was trying to evict me. He was trying to, and then the police officer goes, did you just waste our time with this? He goes, get out. And he goes, if you ever call us again for this stuff, he goes, we're going to arrest you. And I was Shame. like, yes. <laughs> Shame, bro. Yeah. I had an incident once with a student of mine, yeah? So. Sometimes you just want to gut punch them. <laughs> oh, like gut punch them. <laughs> yeah. Yellow pages. Just get the yellow pages. Yeah. Punch them in, yeah, the, in the kidneys. Um, so I was, I was, I was wrapping up like a, a topic. Yeah. So, and then I go like, uh, has anyone got any questions? Yeah, this was like day two of the course. Yeah, and these guys are like young offenders, bro. Like, they're not like good boys. Yeah, yeah? and um, he stands up. He stands up. Imagine he's sitting there. He stands up and he goes to me, "What would you do if I just punch you in the face right now?" Oh man, that's what he did, bro, in front of the whole class. So I looked at him. I said, "All right, come." We, we had these metal cabinets in it. So did you do your car? No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I should have in it. I should have. I just took him round. I just took him. Actually, it's tough for that. I took him outside. I done the, the Mr. Miyagi thing, bro. Hey. I took him outside into the road. Yeah. Not. I wasn't gonna fight him because he was because he was in front of everyone. Yeah. You took him onto the road. No. So so we were in the basement. Yeah. yeah. So my class was in the basement. Yeah. So I said, look, have a break. I took him upstairs. Went out into the road. Yeah. Into the pavement. Yeah. We, know, we left the office, went out to the pavement. I said, listen, look, I don't mind losing my job, bro. If we're going to scrap here, yeah, like, but this is not the place, man, all the time, or there's no need. Cause yeah. I'm here to help you, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm not here to have a, uh, bro, immediately. Switch. He kind of like, that was and it wasn't me trying to be like, oh, it was more like, are you all right, bro? Like, yeah. are you <laughs> mentally okay, bro? Why yeah. would you say that in front of the whole class? Yeah. And I was like, bruv, but if we have to scrap, but I don't mind because I'm not going to let no punk, bruv, like punk me in front of the whole class. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I don't care who you're affiliated with, bruv, because I'm still a man, isn't it, bruv? We're still, I'm not going to let, I don't care who, who I'm rolling with these guys, but I don't care about that, bruv. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? But, I'm, but what I'm trying to explain to you is I'm with you. I'm yeah. on your side. Yeah, you're helping him. I'm trying to help you, bro. Yeah. Well, like, after that day, bro, mentality changed because- because, he, because you know why, bro? His experience in a classroom has been a combative one his Always whole life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you understand, bro? Yeah. So anyway, but it's, it's just funny. So going back- I was teaching, go. I was teaching, because we used to teach schools. Um, like I used to do, when I first opened the gym, I, I was teaching uh, the local schools, kickboxing and stuff. So they used to come to the, come to the school, come to the gym and use, use our facilities. And I used to teach kickboxing to them. Um, and I remember uh, even MMA and stuff. So I remember there was this one kid. He was about well, fifteen or sixteen years old at that time. I'm massive, bro. Yeah, I was like, "Rah, bro, <laughs> you're big for fifteen. Like, Do you want some tea, bro? Yeah, go. On. Like for 15, fifteen, like they, like the fifteen years when I was in school, weren't that big? I don't know what they've been eating, bro. For I just think it's perspective, isn't it? Yeah, Sometimes, yeah. but it's, I remember this boy. So we'll sh I'll show him some moves. Then the class start going, ah. Oh, Go with James, go with James. And I was like, why? He goes, ah, oh, he's the toughest in that school. 
And I was like, all right, come on, James. So James got me the headlock. <laughs> come on, James. So let's go, James. You James. gave him gave him the headlock. So I gave him the headlock, gave me the headlock. Because I knew because it's going to be schoolboy stuff and yeah, what, yeah. what they usually do. So I just took him down and then armbarred him. And then <laughs> that was like, yeah, I beat a 15 year old. <laughs> yeah. no, so then I, but at I, least you just submitted the winner. Yeah, no, 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 no. So I just, I got on top of it, I, arm, I, I, I armbarred him, but not nothing like hard kind yeah. of thing. But he was shocked that I took him down and stuff. And he was, when he first- Was he bigger than you? Yeah, he was a big, big, big boy, like 15 year old big boy. Right. And then uh, and then he was like, um, but I could see he was very boisterous in the class. Like in the way he was, yeah. like he used to bully everyone. And then after I did that, um, and even when I used to teach, like he was like standoffish. I'm like, then, then after, after we did that kind of thing, he came up to me, he goes, oh, can I ask you something? And I said, yeah. He goes, uh, what would you do if someone like punched in the back of the head or something? And straight away when I hear that, that's alarm bells. Mm. Ding. I went, why? Someone after him or something. I go, you get bullied. But think about it, he's the bully mm. in the school. Like, oh, he's the hardest in the school. And he's like, no, 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 nothing happened, coach, all this stuff. And I said, oh, okay, cool. Left him. Next day he come again. And he's then he's like, because I'm a bit more friendly with him stuff. And he's asking, he's going, oh, yeah, coach, that question I was like, saying. Then I started like I started like paying a bit more attention to him. So what's going on? Like, what's up? Kind of thing. He goes to me, he was getting bullied by his older brother. Wow. So when he would eat like breakfast and stuff, his brother would just come behind and just Whoa. bang him in his head and stuff, kind of thing. So I think like he was. From a troubled like home, trauma, brother, troubled yeah. home and stuff, and that came out in school to other kids. I don't where, want that to happen to me. So yeah, he yeah. will do it to other kids, and we actually break down. Yeah, we peel it, peel the layers. Yeah, it always is, bro. Yeah. There's always some sort of trauma or something, and it's like, bro, I know so many kids or so many adults that have their life has gone, and you just think, self, man, life just dealt you a bad card, 100%, and then, yeah. and it's like you feel sorry for them because something's happened to them traumatic and unfortunately they never had the mental training resilience or correct people around them to help them to get through this trauma and we as instructors with limit limited time yeah. time and stuff that we have we try to be that little bit of gap because what i was saying to you is our like our whole mantra is life is hard we build strong uh, strong people and that's through martial arts how do we build strong people through martial art? It's not about becoming a UFC fighter. It's not about, it's about you coming to jujitsu, you come in kickboxing, you have a you have a session, you do sparring, you get tapped out 15 times, and then you come back and you start training again. And I think that teaches you, and that's why I keep trying to say something, because this is life. You're gonna have days where you're going to feel, and then you tap someone, you might tap someone. And then I go, you're going to have days where you, you're you're the best in the class that day. And the next day you get smashed by everyone. You're the hammer of the uh, nail. Yeah. You're the hammer of the nail. And then also, even when I said to my girl, it also teaches you that how to help people. If you become a blue belt, when you roll with white belts, do you annihilate them or do you help them develop their game? You punch down. Yeah. So yeah. what happens is, do you start helping them develop the game or do you be, become that bully? that bullied you or whatever it, whatever situation that you was in, or did you, do you start helping develop these characteristics? And that's what we've, that's what I'm a, I try to Im implement in the club. Like I hate, I can't stand bullies. No, uh, same man, man. Yeah, so I can't stand bullies. So I, I don't want that culture in the gym. So I'm very much like, and obviously cause I've got, I've been injured and stuff as well through bad training partners and stuff. It's, very much like you have to, I, I don't know, you remember when I come, when you, when you guys, when I teach the class on Wednesdays and stuff, I'm very much always, yeah, yeah. Uh, guys look after your training partners, look yeah, after your training partners, because it's it's very easy to get injured, especially when someone goes, grabs whatever they see, and yeah. it's like, ah, just grab your just foot, puts it on, and yeah. just puts it on. It's like, they don't realize that they actually can tear something. And plus this guy's got to go work tomorrow. Yeah. And now, now you can't work, now you can't provide for his family or whatever it is. Um, if someone's fighting professionally, you just ruin their career. Also, like I think, um, what from from what I've seen, I, I, I just look back at my own martial arts kind of <laughs> journey, yeah. Mm. And sometimes there's there's a few different types of people that do martial arts, yeah. And and there's there's like um, uh, uh, from the teaching perspective, something what I see is, I see that there are some students that train 
for the purpose of saying that they train. Okay. Yeah. I'll give you an example, yeah? I don't mean it, they do it consciously. It's not something that, yeah, I'm going to go and train jiu-jitsu so I can say I train jiu-jitsu. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying they train, but they're not doing the inner work here inside themselves yeah. to make themselves better. Yeah. They're worried what other people think yeah. about them as a, as an athlete or as a, as a martial artist. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. It's two different things. You, you might on your outs on the outside, on the outside to everyone, he looks like he's, he's just a normal student, but internally, like the Nia, the intention is wrong. Yeah, and I think in martial but arts is. But that's what that's why I keep. Uh, that's why I keep saying to you. I think as coaches, we have to keep reaffirming the culture that we're trying to create. So yeah. like, um, now we have we have tough, tough sessions. My, my sessions are not easy, um, but ultimately it is to make you better and in the safest way. So like you know. Um, so for example, I remember when, when, we, when we were kids and we used to do kickboxing and stuff, there were no head guards mm. or anything like that. You just go and fight. Um, but then like now I was like, okay, what, what is the best way that I can develop kids to get into spot, get punched without them getting hurt and start enjoying the sport and then develop it that way. Like, so they, so they, so, so there's some sort of development, um, so what we started trying to do now, like inshallah, we're trying to do this, uh, trying to do an inter-club competition. So the kids are all going to wear like body pads, head guards. They might only do like body- For MMA, you mean? For kickboxing. Oh, kickboxing, yeah. And even like MMA as well later on, what we'll do, they'll probably, uh, they'll probably just do grappling and like body striking and stuff. But it's a way to develop um, a bridge. So how do I get them to do full contact and then make it like safe as possible for them to get to full contact rather than, um, destroying the kid early, like getting them getting punched in the face to think, oh, I don't like that. Yeah, I, I yeah. didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't enjoy getting punched in the face. Where you could just have the same competition feel, doing body sparring, and le let them learn and then develop themselves. And then once they get, because fighting's about confidence. The more confident you are, you'll naturally just want to take take it to the next step. And that's all it is, to be honest. And again, you build that confidence up, it it leaks into other parts of their life. And that's the main. I think that should be the as a parent. So let's 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 go into this now. Okay. So it's the main body, like. So yeah. what I really want to talk about, we're, which is. Rob, right, we 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 need to start talking. Yeah, right bro. Like this is it. We're podcasting, bro. Oh, okay. We could be here for four hours, bro. Oh, okay, straight. Mm -hmm. I need to go home though. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, but like since you brought it up, like uh, um, I brought up a lot of things. I brought up a lot of things. Russian but, cowboy. <laughs> Russian cowboy. We need to get into detail with that one. But um, so you know, like if you look. You mentioned, uh, I think, just like off air about um, someone came up to you said my son's being bullied, and we get that a lot. Like, obviously, we're in the martial arts school, um, but I actually think that as a parent, so for example, you look at when you have a child, yeah, you have a newborn, um, you st they go through stages, right? So feeding and then walking, all that stuff, and we, we think about everything for them, right, from young age, what school they're going to go to. Um, where they're going to learn Quran, uh, tuition, um, you know, like extracurricular activities, all these things. One thing we don't think about is how do we make them strong mentally? Yeah. When it comes to fighting, do you get me? Because they're going to get to a point, bro, especially that there, there is, I've never met anyone who hasn't been put in a situation where they've had to defend themselves. I'm not even talking about physically, like from a, from someone saying, oh, you're fat or oh, you're short or- Or just saying no. Or just saying no. People, Do you people, want to smoke some weed? No, nah, I don't want it. No, but not even weed, but people just, just to say no. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't people, like that. People people, yeah. people people don't say no more. Like I remember talking to one of my students and he his mum, he said to me, his mum, he heard someone's mum say to the boy, well done for saying thank you. <laughs> and it's like, you know, like like normal, yeah, normal stuff that we would have said and done. It's straight. It's like, but a lot of kids like come into the club and they don't say Salam Michael. Yeah, like, and I find that that's weird. But I call them back, bro. Yeah, I was like, come here. Or like entering, getting on the mat without actually coming and acknowledging, saying, "Coach, yeah, how like, you doing, Coach?" Yeah. Um, and so I look at uh, th there's a lot of dynamics going on here, though. 
that I look at it and I go, I find the parents quiet. What's going on in the home? Yeah, in the home. Yeah, what's going I on? I find, uh, I f like one one parent, um, I remember his son came in and his, the son had a damaged hand. And um, the parent was trying to, the parent was trying to say to me, let him train. And I was like, mm, no, nah, his hand's busted. So he's not going to train. He's like, no, no, we need to make them tough. I said, that's not the, way, that's not the <laughs> way you make them tough. And I said, do you train? And he's like, no. So I said, shut up. Wow. Because don't live for your children like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're not willing to do stuff like that, don't do that. Don't be that guy. Don't mm -hmm. be that parent. So it's like, because what do you know about being tough? Yeah. What do you know about being tough? Well, you watch Rambo. Or some 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 movie well, or something. You're taking it back, boy. Huh? <laughs> you're taking it back. <laughs> Rambo. It That's the back. first thing that came out. <laughs> yeah. Rambo. Rambo. What is it? This this podcast and its fixation with Rambo, bro. What other movie? He's a bad man. Because Rambo is the epitome of being a bad man. Yeah, because he does it on his ones, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah, that's like, it. Anti-war like, as well, bro. And he's anti-war, and he's like, then, yeah, he, then he's like, okay, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do you want the man? Rambo's no, Muslim, I'll, I'll, I'll get my ones. Nah, Rambo's Muslim, bro. Yeah. I'm getting my ones. <laughs> yeah, and it's just um, so so that 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 things are that things dangerous as well. I had another I had uh, another parent, um, and again, it's not this is not having a go at the parents or. Um, it's about trying to solve a problem, bro. Like, what's, what's the root of the know, issue? No, it's not, you know, sometimes I think, like, you know, Hamza, we've had life experiences. Well, I, me personally, I've walked many paths. Yeah. yeah? So, and I think you guys, bruv, you've seen, yeah, uh, heard and yeah, done yeah, and kind of things. So yeah, we've, walked, we've walked different paths. And you don't want these children to go through that stage, go through that, yeah. get, go through that. So I remember these cute kids were doing jujitsu and one of them was getting choked out. He started crying came over and went, ran to his mum. His mum came over to me and said, excuse me, look, my son is crying. I was like, okay, what's the matter? He goes, oh, he's choking me. And I was like, yeah, that's That's, that's, that's literally the sport. That is jujitsu, that kind of thing, that you're going to get choked. And I was like, okay, uh, did it hurt you? No, 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 it didn't hurt me. It just, I, I couldn't, I said, yeah, tap then if it does, just stop. But she was so extra, yeah. like too much. Like, and I was like, yeah, you need to let him do it. Then I said to him, then he, he started crying. And I said, cold blooded. <laughs> then I went, did you play hit him up to him? Bro? Then I went, <laughs> then I said to him, said, then I got to him, your mum's not always going to be there for you. Yeah? He went, what? <laughs> Why are you saying How old that? are they, bro? They're like 13, bro. 13? Yeah, big boys, man. 13, is that crying? Is nah, like, 13, why, he's crying like that, why, bro. Why are you saying that for? And I was like, Nah, he's soft, bro. Never, but that's what I'm saying, that. And I was you like, soft. Yeah, and I was like, he's going, why are you saying that for? And I was like, rah, okay. Like, uh, that's why, mad, bro. Why, why am I saying that? Because it's true. And I was like, stop crying. And I was like, you know what he's like, stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> You don't, okay. I don't know purpose just to see that. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, it's, the, no, it's not always the mums, though, bro. But and, like, and, and, and it's pops, a lot of the times it's the mums, though. No, no, no. It's not only the mums, bro. It's the pops as well. Bro. I've seen the pops because I've seen I've seen the pops as well. Yeah, and it was like uh, one, one kid. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna go to jail after this, though, but. <laughs> This is where you get cancelled, isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> go I said to one kid, I was going to throw him off the balcony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. said that a few yeah, times. Yeah. That's yeah. right, I don't know. You said it. So we both get cancelled together. Remember, bro, he's getting jail first. But proverbial. You better uh, share in the cell, bro. Figuratively speaking. No. Yeah. Are <laughs> you actually going to chuck him up? I was going to chuck him up, bro. Come on, man. I said, do you know what, do you know what happened? Because this is, this, is, this is what I'm saying to you. And then I, then I spoke to him after. Again, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I just, I, I get a little bit vexed and I end up speaking to them after. Um, I was talking to the class. I said, okay, who's here for next class? Da, 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 da. He's looking at me and I'm saying, are you here for the next class? Are you here for the next class? Three, four times. He goes, what? Me. And I was like, uh, who are you talking to? Respect your elders, brother. And I was like, I was like, who are you talking to? I said, you talk to me like again. I said, you know, it's that balcony. <laughs> <laughs> Head first. <laughs> yeah. He started, I couldn't believe he started crying. He cried. Yeah, he started crying. How old is this kid, man? Oh, he must be 29. <laughs> <laughs> He's about uh, 17 or something. 17? Yeah. I can honestly tell you, bro. But from the age of a specific age, I can't remember crying, bro. Bro, I don't even remember. After a specific age, I stopped crying, bro. 
Yeah, it, like, uh, it, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, like, I'm not trying to stand hard here, yeah, but it's like it would take a lot to make me cry. Yeah, like, yeah obviously, there's, like, there has like, to be certain things. Like, yeah, yeah, but yeah, someone yeah. shouting at me is not going to make me cry, bro. And, like, and then, then, then after, um, one of the other stu- senior students spoke to him. I said, "Yeah, you're rude, like the way you said that." Yeah. Then he came over here and I said to him, "I go listen. I go look. When someone's talking to you, I go, you need to learn to speak correctly. I go like, look them in the eye." Like, you know, and say what you, if you're not going to train, say in the correct way and all this stuff. And I was, I was trying to give him some like adv- guidance, advice kind of thing. And Hamza, he took he it. He piped down, yeah. He piped, it was caught, but he's a, he's a nice boy. Just find that very strange. And I think that's what caught me off guard. I was like, hmm, hold on a minute. Why did you think that it was okay to talk to me like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, then you have certain kids, again, they get bullied. And then when you see them talk, you realize why they get bullied. Yeah. Because they got no control of their tongue. Yeah. So they'll talk, there's other students in the class and they'll say something to the, like, like they'll say, uh, I don't like that about you or something. And it's like, yeah, that's. Yeah, you're going to get taxed for that one, bro. Someone will slap you. Yeah. And you don't, you don't, you don't just. And then they're the ones who are, oh, what, why, what did I get slapped for? Yeah. And he's, uh, he's getting bullied. And I was like, why is he getting bullied though? I'm a victim blamer, like uh, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> but you can't ask that question though. But it's true though. But another thing as well is like, um, you can't always be the innocent party, bro. There's, I've so, seen, but I've you, s- you did something. Yeah, 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 what yeah, did yeah. you do? My mum always said it, bro. It's like, or, or on, what didn't I you come, do? I come on, mama, I had the fight. And she yeah. said, what did you do? <laughs> exactly. Well, I didn't chase the guy down the road. <laughs> it's, it's funny because I've but I've worked with my 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 life's goal. I remember when I first started teaching, yeah, was to work with every single type of student. Mm. Yeah, like I just wanted to understand the human condition. Mm. But just for my own kids' sake, bro, yeah. And I, I worked with I worked with young kids, I've worked with the adolescent age, I've worked with older, so 18 and above, like young adults, yeah. And I've worked with kids from in care, social care, who are going through trauma, bro. Um, I've worked with uh, in, uh, people who have left jail, like we've been, who done a, basically done a bird and come out of jail. I've worked with guys that are about to offend. I've I've seen the whole spectrum, right? I've, I've worked in, in a martial arts environment. Oh, Go on. About to offend? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean by that? So for example, like you can actually tell, bro. Oh, okay. There's an actual, there's an actual the program. Minority, the, group, the group that they Yeah, so okay, what, I'll yeah. give you the- he, he used to work for Minority Report. <laughs> minority Report, yeah, pre-crime. <laughs> pre-crime, bro. Right, right. You've got to go jail. You're, you're going to be what a- For what you're about to do. But for example, there's something called a PRU, People Refer Unit, yeah? Oh, okay. So it's when you get kicked out of school and yeah. you get put, this is a mad one, the bro. The special, the, the other school. It's not a special school in that, that, in that sense, but- yeah, spe- yeah, yeah, but when we say special, we know what we mean because we're born in the 80s. Yeah, we're no, special not, meets out of the. Don't do it. <laughs> not that special. Not that. But yeah, so they're, they're about to commit a crime. They're, 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 they're on the. <laughs> he's going to get cancelled. He's going to get cancelled. They're on the They're on the train. They're on the same. Like they're on, they're on a trajectory to about to, 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 to either join a gang, create crime, uh, um, uh, commit a crime. Yeah. Okay. And it all boils down to self awareness, bro. Yeah. It all boils down to, and bruv, it, what's, the, what's the home life like? Yeah. What's the um, the environment he's grown up? I know it's, it's like a broken record, yeah? No, but it's true. But, but, but this is, this but is what true. it is. I'll give you an example, bro. If you've brought your child to, to train martial arts because they're getting bullied, it's, I'm not saying it's too late, but the damage is done. Now it's about rectifying that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But if you if you bring your child from a young age, yeah, to train martial arts, I'm not saying they're not going to get bullied, but if that, it does happen, mentally, they don't have to deal it's, with it. They don't have to deal with it. And, and, and depending on the level of uh, bullying, right? And and also, martial arts is only part of it. There's a, there's obviously other, other things as a parent that you can do. For example, um, setting very clear goals in the house. Creating a, 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 an environment, I believe that your, your your children should struggle. What I mean by struggle, they should be they shouldn't have an easy life. Do you know what I mean, bro? Mm. Like if you're just playing computer, doing whatever they want. No, no. There's no, there's no. Like I remember um, growing up, you, you've you've seen it, bro. Yeah. Uh, some some kids, bro. They they get their, their latchkey kids. Yeah. They go home. They can play Super Nintendo until eleven at night, bro. They eat 
they eat, you know, whatever they want. Their mom just leaves them like, or their dad leaves, leaves them money. They, they dress in the best clothes, bruv. They're, just you know what I'm saying? Like, they've, I'm talking about the pressure that they have socially is less. They don't, they're not, they're not having to struggle, but they don't have that, they're not, they don't have that attention from their parents, bro. Mm. Yeah, but those are mostly um, single single children. Not all the time, bro. No, no, sometimes both mom and dad work, bro. Yeah, they're working stuff. You and get, there's a lot of it, bro. You do get it. Because single mothers get a lot of blame, um, second, no, bro. No, no, they're trying their just, best. Yeah. But a lot of the times, it's the, no, the mom and- about single child, as in the, the child's by himself. Oh, like an- yeah. Only child. Yeah. Like but only but child. even even if it's like- um, But you know what I find though, also? Yeah, go on. Is um, you need to set- you, for me, it's like if say like kids at home, you need to set kids with core values. Yeah, they need to know because well, the problem is like I feel like for for example, for for young girls now, I, I feel I actually feel sorry for them in a the sense that if you look at all the market and everything now, it's always targeted at women and girls and stuff. You have to look a certain way. You have to behave a certain way. Yeah. You have to do things. You got second wave feminism. Yeah. You've got so many, and so many mixed messages going left, right, left, right. So these kids, they're confused about who they are. And what- the, bro, the sexualization of young girls, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying to you. Give you an example so on, on that. Go on, go on. So, so, they, so they're, getting, they're, getting, they're getting lost and they don't know, like even like what friends to choose. Yeah. So what happens is you don't even know what friends, because your friends should align with your values, values. Bro. If they don't fall into your values, yeah. they're not your friends, Bond bro. Them off, bro. It's, and, yeah. and bro, and you shouldn't feel bad saying, or you wouldn't, even, you wouldn't even just associate yourself with them because why? It's like, say for example, you, you don't sit up and watch Netflix all night, yeah? They go, did you watch that program? No, I didn't. Yeah. Okay, there's no conversation to have after that. Like, <laughs> because you did because you didn't watch it. They'll they all find like-minded friends and then you're not going to be able, if I'm, so for example, say you get your kids involved in sports and they're training all the time or they're doing some, training homework, training homework or whatever. How they got time to talk to other kids about- That like is, bro. Yeah, that's, that's it. Long. And it's like, that's number one. That's number one. But that comes from the parents first, ha- setting those values, letting your children know who they are, like um, making sure that they're strong and comfortable in their personality. In their skin. Yeah. In their skin, who they are. But that's what I said to you. You know, like what, what, even whilst, what my whole things about the gym and stuff were, yeah, I'm very comfortable with being a Muslim. I'm very comfortable being- where I'm from or whatever it is. Like, you ain't gonna talk to me no like, sorry, bro. Excuse my language. It's fine, bro. But it's not gonna happen. Cause I, I, and, and that's, and that's where- But also I'm not gonna change my behavior. I won't. To, to make you feel comfortable. I don't. Bro. In the sense of, uh, not in an ignorant way, but- No, no, not ignorant but, way. I'm polite, bro. I'm, 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 I ain't got a problem with you. What is it? Said? Uh, I if got- they say, uh, uh, I say I've got no problem, but if you've got a problem, I say no problem. <laughs> And that's what it is, bruv. It's like now you behave with people the way they behave with you. You give me respect, I give you respect. Yeah. You want to step outside the box, no problem. And it's these guys, and if you if you teach your children that, that okay, look, you should be able to say no to many things. Not I'm talking, not talking about being bullied or fighting or anything. Just say no. I don't mm. agree with you. I don't want to do this. I don't agree with that. Bruv, I said to my nephew, but I've always checked what type of food he eats during the week. Because I know you're in school and they go out to eat chip, chicken and chips, probably lunchtime. Every, and I'm like, yeah, you can't eat that. And he's yeah. like, oh, oh, like, um, I go, you're training. Yeah. If they want to eat that, you you can go, but you say, I, I don't eat that. And I go, you got to understand, your, you, you got to understand who you are and what your values are. You are training to do jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, whatever it is. You need to make sure you eat properly. So you should never wa- never be bullied or, yeah, make or coerced bullet. into, oh, go on, bro, have some, have some wings. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, bro, I don't and do I, that. I, Another thing is, especially as Muslims, yeah, we're bringing up our children in an environment um, which is hostile, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's hostile. Not just the Muslims. You've got, you got black and ethnic minorities who have a different culture to the mainstream culture, yeah? And I remember thinking to myself, I remember very young, very young, yeah? And this is a credit to my dad's upbringing, bro. Yeah. Very young thinking, what makes it that your, what you do is right and what I do is weird? Yeah. Like, who said that, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, who said that? Because I grow a bit. I remember one time I was in McDonald's, I worked at McDonald's for about three months, yeah? Guy told me to shave my moustache, but I had like little, it wasn't even much, bro. Whiskers. Yeah? 
Whiskers, bro. Because you got a shave. I said to him, this is my last day, Rude Boy. I just walked out. Yeah. But you don't wash your bum, though. So, <laughs> like, go, but who are you telling you know me to shave I mean, my moustache, bro? bro? Come on, fam. Do you see what I'm saying? You're telling like, me. Or for, for, for well, example, you got, you got crispy I went, boxes, fam. I went, yeah, yeah. Like I, went for, I went for an interview, and I remember uh, this was in Chigwell in 1999. Yeah. So I went for an interview in the gym, and then uh, the guy goes, So we went through the whole interview and stuff, and then he said to me, uh, I had a, like, a, like a stubble all the way around. So he said to me, you need to shave your beard off though and your tash and everything when you come work. And I was like, nah, I ain't doing that. And he said to me, why not? I said, that's my identity. Yeah. I go, this is who I am. I've always had a little bit of like, like a go, even when I was younger, I had a little Five go. o'clock shadow, bro. Yeah, so I said, if I, and it's like weird. If you take yeah. it off, you like, you just look rather like- But also, yeah. that would make me want to grow one up to my knees, bro. If <laughs> yeah. someone said that to me. But, but even then, bro, I won't even, but, but even- Do you know if, what I'm saying to you, bro? Then, but I was like, no, nah, this is this is who I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he goes to me, oh, what happens if uh, some old white woman sees you? And this was the actual question. So he actually, he actually he said, said that, that Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and An old was, white woman, he so said. Because <sighs> I was an Lord. ethnic, think about it. I'm right. an ethnic in Chigwell. So it's predominantly right. white. white. Yeah. So I said to him, and brother, it was super white that time, yeah? So he goes to me, um, what do you think if uh, some old white woman sees you? And I said to him, I'm going to come up to her with the same respect and like how, how I do with anyone else. And I go, she goes, but he goes, that she might feel intimidated. I go, well, if she feels intimidated, that's her problem, not mine. Because... I ever come with an issue that means she's got some sort of preconceived idea about me yeah. and then that's what she's coming with yeah I actually got the job I, I found that really and I, it's funny though look that, Mohammed, that was when I was 19 years old I yeah. still remember that interview yeah because it stuck deep because, because you were profiled was, bro yeah I was profiled you were profiled so bro. He, and then they, everyone just called me the big Greek man they got that really that big Greek man's really nice you no, know, I called myself Moroccan for a long time. No, no. It's just easier. But but was, honestly, you know, for me, where's Algeria? I go, you know oh, what? I'm just Moroccan. Algeria. No, no, but Nigeria, even, but, you're yeah, not yeah. black. But, but, no, no, but like, even, uh, even, uh, even Morocco, people never used to know. Like, yeah, when, yeah. When back in the day. Yeah, it's but, only when the tourism thing start yeah, opening yeah. in the night, no, isn't no, it? Slow. I remember I was telling them North African. They said, they look at me and go, but you're not black, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's tiring, bro. And I'm like, yeah, it's North kind of Yeah, thing, it's like, you know, whatever, bro. Yeah, but it used to be funny. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, so growing up, uh, what was it about? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I thought, let me not jump in late. I, 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 was, I was looking at your cogs turning. <laughs> that was like, what's the So basically, um, <laughs> wait, a minute, wait a minute, where am I? <laughs> Did we say, uh, oh wait, did we say I'm not punch drunk? <laughs> so I I basically, I should have bucked and should have slipped. Oh, man. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's what happened, bro. <laughs> but yeah, no. So going back to kind of the whole thing about kids training now. So I'm not saying martial arts is, cures everything. No, it's just one part of things. I think for me, what what helped me as a, as a kid is I was a very anxious kid, very kind of shy. Very it, it helped me bring out. Actually, it gave me some foundations to work with. I still had to deal with a lot of stuff, but it, I think if I didn't have it. Like there's a lot of stuff today that I wouldn't be able to do. Like I give you an example. I, I remember giving a speech in front of 300 people, bro. Yeah. Like as a kid, just just to kind of answer a question would have been very difficult. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like just to, even this podcast, bro. Yeah, yeah. This this would have been something completely out. It's completely out of my wheelhouse. Okay. But over the years, I think because you're pushing yourself. You're not a stranger to having these, when we talk about stretch goals, like having goals and, sh and, 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 and okay, what, what if I can do that? What if I can do that? And slowly, slowly. See, what, what we do, so what I do at the academy is, um, so what we do at the academy is once the kids get black belts, they, part of their, part of their curriculum, uh, part of the curriculum is they have to shadow me for, for the, for when I'm teaching. And then, they have to teach 20 hours of classes. Right. So they actually have to teach That's the classes. Sick, man. And when they, when they, and I obviously I'm there with them, I don't have a break. So <laughs> they get to black belt, do they get black belt again? But, oh, adult, uh, kids. Yeah. yeah. So they have, jun they've got a junior black belt. Yeah. And then, then what happens after that? So then after, when they get to 18, then I'll grade them again. 
And then, so they get the, the senior black belts. Oh, okay. So there's no belts after black belt. No, no. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't do all that stuff. Oh, there. okay. So right, I just give, right. them, I give them the junior black belts. They're like 16 and they'll stay at that level. And then I'll see what, what level they're at as an adult. Right. So two 18. years. Two years wait. And then, uh, right, right, so right. they got time. So minimum develop. age is 16. So even like 16, they, de they develop that strength and uh, yeah. resilience stuff as well. So when they get to 18, they, then they're kicking hard and all that stuff. So what I do is they have to shadow us for 20 hours. Shadow me, for, uh, shadow me first, and then they got to um, teach 20 hours of um, classes. Yeah. And then I give them the black belt. Oh, okay. So you don't get your black belt until you've no. taught 20. That's quite sick, yeah. man. So that's, the, that's, the, that's part of the assessment. Mm. And also, like what you said, like martial arts is not... See, I, I look at, you know, there's trainers. So there's a difference. You have people who are trainers. They are guys that will who who got clubs and stuff and they, they're just trainers so they, i look at it as they run kickboxing like classes instructors, yeah one two kick kick couldn't then you have coaches and then you have life coaches so a sensei is a completely different thing that's like yeah like, like yeah, again that's so, what a sensei is so, isn't so, it so, so yeah. a sensei yeah. is a life coach like a, a life coach who is in martial arts kind of thing yeah. um and they're teaching you uh about the ethics of martial Like even for example, um, you know the guy I was saying to you, he wanted to fight and he wanted to do like continuous. Just oh, right. So yeah, he yeah. didn't understand the rules of like continuous. Okay. So I said to him, when you go to, if, if a country was ever got to go to war, would they just blindly go in and fight or would they go and check out the terrain, see what the other army has and then they go and fight them. So that's like rules of war, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So he's like, yeah, they'll do that. And I was like, so why did you think that you can just go and turn up and fight and you don't know the rules? You don't know what the what what what, what to expect or anything. So I go, this is exactly the same thing. So we're, what he goes, oh, coach, I never thought of like that. And I was like, yeah, this is what you need to think about. This is my job. This is what I do. And then you have to take my guidance. You might not like it. You might not like what I say to you, but you have to trust me that I have your best interests at heart. And that's what we're trying to teach. That is so important, K, man, what you just said there, bro, about the student trusting the instructor, bro. Oh, yeah. And the sense, because, because I'll tell you why it's more important now than ever, yeah? Yeah. Because how many times have you got this in a class? On YouTube, I went, like, I got asked a question in class, yeah, the other time. On YouTube, <laughs> this happened. On YouTube, that happened. And I'm like, I'm like, this you, is, this is, this is, this, this, no, YouTube. it's not even that. It's not their fault, bro. Because they're taking, for example, if I wanted to Tyler Wall, yeah, I'll go on YouTube and I'll figure it out. Yeah. Mm. Um, but if I, I'd rather someone teach me. So I mean, it's different from, if I had, I give you an example. If someone, if I was working for a, a, a master tilesman, yeah. And he's teaching me how to tile a wall. Yeah. And then I go on YouTube and learn from the video. And then I go back to the master tile, but on this YouTube video, bruv, that is nonsense, bro. Yeah. Like, because it's a completely different way of learning something. Now, YouTube as a supplementary thing is a completely different story. And also, who's teaching you? Yeah. Who is this person on YouTube that's teaching you? Yeah. What's their credentials? But I always like, look at, I always look at- um... You said something to me last time, Kay, about you would watch a video, yeah. You said, well, you explain it actually, because... Uh... Yeah, so what I was saying is when when people come to learn martial arts, they're, they're still like, I look at them as infant school or junior school students yeah. in school. So they're still, still learning alphabet or they might know a few words and they kind of can read and write. And then you go, then you start going to high school, college, university. And like we've been... I've been doing this since I was five years old. So I'm in the, I've been teaching since I was 20. And so I've been in this game for like nearly 30 years, 30 years, 35 years doing teaching as well. So what I look at it as that you're, you're at PhD level, you're at a doctor's level. So you understand the intricate details. So I remember the mastery. Watching, yeah. yeah. So I understand when people watch, when people watch YouTube videos, they're not seeing those, those fine details 
what that guy is doing, where he's putting his foot, where he's putting his hand, where he's doing this, where as an, as someone who's been there, done it, seen it, um, you kind of know, okay, he's, he's where his foot is. They miss that whole bit out. It's like, it's, it's, the fundamentals it's are not like, there. I'll yeah. tell you what it's like. You know, if you had a high school student go and they pick up a university book in, of chemistry and they got, they got very basic understanding of chemistry from high school and they're trying to read a PhD chemistry book. Yeah, but I'll take it one further as oh, well. Wait, so no. what will happen is, so this, this, this is how I kind yeah. of uh, envision it. They read it and it's kind of like, oh, I, I know what I that is. I understand the words. I, yeah, I understand yeah. that. Oh, okay, cool. But even that page, there's chunks of it that they miss. And yeah. then what they do in their brain, they kind of just mash it up and it kind of becomes this some sort of version that they have. Yeah. Um, so like, like I'll give you an example. For, um, if you look at different levels of learning, yeah? Yeah. There's something called synthesis. Yeah. Yeah. Which what you do. Yeah. So for example, what I know, the knowledge I have, and then looking at something else and then combining it to make something new. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can't achieve that level unless you've mastered that topic. Yeah. So for example, if you've studied jujitsu for 20 years, yeah. Yeah. And you watch a video, you're seeing it for a completely different lens. Yeah. Complete, like it's a completely different lens. Yeah. If you've trained jujitsu for six months, you don't even have glasses on, bro. Yeah, yeah. You're seeing blurry things. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're not even, yeah, yeah. do you get me? Yeah. Like you're looking through a window where yeah. it's dirty. Yeah, yeah. You don't but, understand nothing. Yeah, you, you, yeah, because, and even I look at myself, like for example, Alhamdulillah, I've got you and, and Amir to kind of like, I, I'm young in the game, bro. Mm. Like I'm young. I'm, I'm still coming in with the, I'm trying to get my prescriptions. Mm. <laughs> do, do you see what I'm saying? Mm. So for me is when you, like when, when, when you and, and Amir, for example, say um, when you're teaching a move, I might've seen it a hundred times, you do it, but I'm always paying attention to the detail because, and, and, and when you teach, because you point out, you point out the milestone, the, um, the, the details. A lot of people don't even look at that. They look at it as they, uh, the the move as a whole. But if you pay attention closely in the class, yeah. I remember Jude, the same thing when he came and did the, the seminar. Yeah. He points out the details. Yeah. But you know what happens? Gun. See like now, um, also you got to know your audience. Yeah. See what happens is, uh, this is where, that's why I said to you, when you start teaching for a long time, you start realizing, hold on, wait a minute. If I'm talking to a white belt, and I'm telling them about the intricate details yeah. or something. Really? It's yeah, like, it's, it's like me talking to another language. Yeah, yeah. It's literally me talking to another. But if I just said to him, it's like, you know, um, you know when we used to teach, uh, when I used to train people. So when people used to come to the gym, I never used to say treadmill. We never say treadmill because you th they didn't understand. A lot of people remember. They don't even know what a treadmill is. What a treadmill yeah. is. You say running machine. Right. Yeah. Ellipt elliptical trainer, uh, elliptical uh, thing, cross trainer, yeah? So it's like, uh, you, you'd start trying to figure out words because you can see them, they they look at you for a little bit and it, they don't, they, they feel shy to ask you what, yeah, what, yeah. what do you mean? And then you realize, okay, this person doesn't even know what, what this is. So then, then you start trying to find ways to actually just educate them or try to teach them without the jargon. Yeah, That's what I find a lot of people do as well, still now when they coach. They want yeah. to dazzle their students. Yeah, yeah. because that's, uh, again, uh, are you trying to- It's an ego thing, isn't it? Are you, yeah. trying to better, are you trying to better your students or you're trying to let them know that, yeah. oh, I know loads of moves. Yeah. Like for me, it's, it's about, again, as a coach, I'm there to make you better. You have to trust my process. Yeah. If you don't trust it, cool, no problem. Else, yeah. if, even if someone said to me, for example, if someone said to me, oh, I didn't sweat this session. If you want to sweat, go to the sauna. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah, you're missing out what I was trying to teach this today. Yeah. You've completely gone out your head. We could have a conversation for half an hour. Not that I do, but what I'm saying is we could have that type of session where I asked the class two weeks ago, I said to them, I go, what is your purpose for you guys coming to this class? And do you understand what type of coach I am? Mm. And... Alhamdulillah, my, my, I think like at the academy, they kind of know, even at Legion, I think they know what type of coach uh, me, Amir, and Rubas are, uh, what we're about. Even you, Mashallah, so all of, I think we're all in the same kind of boat. So what what we what we kind of 
what we're kind of trying to implement. So I said to them, I go, look, you can go to anyone and he can hold pads for you and you can throw 10 punches, 20 punches, eight punches, six punches, do 10 burpees, roundhouse kicks. And I go, you'll have a great workout. I ain't, I'm not that guy. If you want to learn how to move your feet, avoid getting hit. Details. Yeah. That's what I'm about. I I spend I spend time developing my syllabus. We've done how much time do we spend doing the wrestling syllabus, the yeah. jujitsu syllabus? We've done my kickboxing syllabus. I think Imran's come me seen 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 me call numbers and alphabets and stuff like that. And that's that takes time, bro. And that's like I keep calling it unseen hours. Yeah, hundred percent. And I always tell my students as well. In anything you do, it's the unseen hours. So we go, like I train. I'm, I'm back. I train. I still train two to three times a day. Yeah, and. That's not like a thing to, oh, I train two, three times a day. It's, I train two, three times a day. And then I say to my that's students. Your, that's your profession. That's it? my profession. Yeah. But as an older guy as well though, yeah? So I was saying to the guys, yeah, if you're young and you're trying to make it and you only come twice a week. Yeah, you're not about that life. You're not about that life. Yeah. And I said to them, you, you, you need to understand there's people that will work, that go to work, they train before work, come back and they go train after work because they want to make it. They want to think, and this could be, and again, that mentality could be applied to anything. So if you want to become, I don't know, an accountant, doctor, yeah. whatever, you need to put that work in. And if you're not doing that and you're saying, oh, even bro, when we were saying about the, when you started your business, bro, I used to sleep behind my fridge, <laughs> you know, in the gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we had the fridge uh, reception. So I used to open up the gym uh, at six in the morning and then by two o'clock, I was, yeah, dead, dead yeah so but I remember I had to be there so most people would work eight hour shift and go home I have to be there till 10 to or, and, I don't, and I don't till, leave until 11 so I just go behind the fridge sleep for a couple hours and then come back out and then I'll get, get food or whatever come back five six o'clock and I'm there from six to eleven so I teach the classes and then eleven o'clock I've got to t- tidy, clean the gym up and stuff so people there's those unseen hours that people never saw yeah. and bro what was what was we doing we was trying to train for fights professionally as well and doing juggling all that as well so it was it was tough but yeah you want to do it you want to you want it to succeed and this is what we're trying to teach children this is the the work ethic and everything that we're trying resilience um mental mental strength mental strength as well how how do you become how do you become mentally strong how do you become mentally strong what do you think I just threw it, so I threw it back at him. Bro, I thought he's, oh, he's actually asking, I thought he was going to give us the, that, bro. the Thank answer, you, bro. welcome to GWL Podcast. <laughs> I'm your host, Talisma. We're joined by... <laughs> I think from, from my experience, yeah. me, I'm talking about me personally, yeah. is to accept, number one, that to get what you want, you have to go through, I'm, I'm not going to use the word pain, but friction. There mm. needs to be friction, bro. Mm. Anything you want to do, there's going to be friction to it. So that's number one, yeah? I think number two is to actually understand that. Like, don't expect something to be easy. For example, let's look at GCSEs, for example, yeah? You want to get you want to get good grades in your GCSEs. It's impossible to do that without friction, mm. r- revision, waking up early, doing all that stuff, right? Once you internalize that, you accept that, and you know that's the sunnah of life, the what would the the word be? Um, the the how life is built. What what's the what 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 is the the natural um, way of things in anything in the universe? The way the universe is created, bro. Mm. Like if you look at, for example, to to leave for a rocket to leave the atmosphere, it has to. It, how much fuel you have to use to just okay. to just. Uh, break the the atmosphere. Yeah, you know that's most most of the. I think uh, I read this. Yeah, most of the fuel taken off. is 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 taken off. Yeah. After that, it's once you get into space. Yeah, you know it's, it's it's a different story, right? So internalize that. Number two, listen to people who have already gone through those things. Understand understand that. But do you think people find it hard? Um, do you think people find it hard to listen because they haven't experienced it? 
Because they haven't experienced... So when you say, to, when you say... Imagine you're trying to tell someone about their trauma. Yeah. And you say to them, oh, look, this, this, I, I've gone through this trauma. And because you haven't gone through it, you don't know what that feels like. So I it's think, hard to take that advice. I think, I think yeah, that's a good question, bro. Yeah, because... I've just completely flipped this. You flipped this whole thing. Bro. Man's interviewing me, bro. I'm so good at because this. Because we've had these conversations yeah, bare, bro. Yeah. We've Man, had these conversations. Can I answer that question? So I, I'll give you an example, no, bro. you can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, you know, um, we 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 want to because we haven't gone through that thing. Mm. So let's 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 give an example. Uh, starting a business, yeah, yeah. Now it's weird because most people when they want to start a business, they just start one, right? They start. They don't really like. I remember I read the, this book called the Small Business Bible, yeah, and it said that if you want to start an ice cream shop. You should go and work in an ice cream shop for six months first. Yeah. Find out all the details. All the details, then open it up. Yeah. And I've I can tell you a lot of people that I've I, I know that have started businesses have never done that. Yeah. Yeah. And they always go through you, you'll you'll save a lot of heartache. But I think also No, no, but anyway, that's not what I'm asking though. Go on, what, what's the question? So what I what I asked you is that you went to start a business. Yeah. And I've already got a business. Yeah. And I'm giving you advice, advice about the friction or whatever you need to go through. How how would you be able to deal with that? How, how would you take that advice if you've never got, if, you, if you've never done it? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? That's I not- think it becomes trust in it. Yeah. So do I trust? So I, first first thing is, when I look at you, mm. do, I, do I want to emulate you? Yes. Are you a type of person that I'm going to take advice from? Yeah. That's number one. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that give advice. I get, but how many times have people given you advice? Go on. So, so no, no, because you, because it's kind of come back. Yeah, to, yeah full quite, circle. Yeah. To what I wanted to say, actually. Yeah, go on. You, you, I've, I've actually done this quite good, to be honest. Well, he's, uh, oh, you should even start your own show, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what, what you just, what you, sorry, what did you say? I, I said, do I was, trust, do yes. I trust that person? So, enough? what he said was, you know the instructor? Yeah. So it goes back to that. So when the instructor's telling you something, and do you trust the instructor to believe what... So now, for example, imagine you had an overweight instructor. Yeah. Who's got a belly out really this big, and he's saying, you know what you need to do? You need to lose weight. Uh, if you want to be a good fighter. And he's like, oh, no, wait, 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 you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if, uh, honestly, what do you think? Like, if you saw, if you saw a really overweight... Like I'm talking about like- It depends if it's old or not old, like- Not old, not old, still, because bruv- Because like, you look at Javier Mendes, we were talking about him. But, but Javier Mendes let himself go. Yeah, he let himself go. Yeah. He's probably the first person to tell you that. Yeah, yeah again, I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, again, not, I'm not- Not a par. Not, not, I'm saying, not- But again, his, his knowledge I'm not, though. I'm not saying, again, this is difference. his knowledge, but the thing is, he, the proof in the, proof, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah, yeah. He was world champion and stuff, yeah. yeah. yeah? So he's developed a lot of fighters and stuff. So not, we're not, not- uh, uh, But no disrespect to- uh, No, we're not talking about Javier uh, Mendes. Uh, yeah. I'm, he's, again, what, what I'm saying is, we're talking about just general instructors and yeah. stuff. Even when you go to the gym, yeah? You'll see guys who don't, are not about that life. And they want to tell you, this is what you do, this is what yeah, you do. Yeah. And I think that's where- Are you an authority? We talk about this, that's yeah. it. Are yeah. you an authority? Yeah. In what you're doing, do you do? You, does do that, you drink your Kool Aid? Does that person believe in what he's actually saying? Yeah, yeah. Do you get? It? So if I'm yeah. saying to you, um, like you should train like this or whatever, and I don't do it myself, then I automatically think to myself, you you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, listen to that person. But if someone has actually gone through that, then maybe yeah, you yeah. would listen to that. I think it's, it's it's all about authority, bro. Do you have authority in what you're saying? Do you see what I'm saying? Like anything, even in business, for example. And what was, authority in- uh, Authority yeah. in, well, this is what I mean what, by that. I mean, legitimacy. Yeah, legitimacy. In, in, in a sense of, in, in a sense of, um, you, authority, authority is like, okay, you've, it's, it's, you might be, we're not, I'm not talking about someone who's well known or, I'm just saying someone who, like if I, I don't have, I'm not, I'm, I'm talking about general instructors. Yeah. Like just, like just say someone local, He's told oh, you I see to, what you're saying. He tells you to eat healthy because he eats healthy. Yeah. He doesn't tell you to eat healthy. And then as a student, because if I saw my instructor, he's telling me to eat healthy and I see him banging out uh kebabs, and tro- kebabs after it. Let's go to let's go, let's go eat kebabs after. I'm like, yeah, but you're telling everyone to eat healthy though. Why don't you do it? It's like football coaches, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying to you. So it's like, uh, yeah, my career's over. 
And that's it, done. So, okay. Yeah. Now, what happens is when that person gets older, she's going to do the same thing. Yeah, My yeah, career's yeah. over. Now I'm going to start eating crap. But I think, I think what you've said is, I've seen it myself, is you're more likely to take advice from someone that... Has been... Your, 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 yes. Your, your word, what you say carries way more weight if you do what you're, what, what you're if saying. you've done what you've said. Okay. That's what I think. Yeah. For example, I, I I you fought professionally, yeah? Yeah. So you have a different, you have a different idea of what fighting is than someone who just done jiu-jitsu. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Like I, 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 at course. the highest level, bro. Of course. Of course. Yeah? Of course. I'm talking about fighting. I'm not yeah, talking about um, jiu-jitsu specifically. No, no, of course, of course. There's difference. So there's a massive difference between, so if I'm getting into, a, if I'm going into a fight, I'm not oh. going to take advice from someone who just does the jitsu, bro. Even street fights. Yeah, even so street you, fights. No, no, yeah. I'll tell you why. Because I, I, I've I, seen, I've seen uh, a lot of um, videos of people having, giving advice about street fights and stuff. I actually saw a video recently. The, someone was on doing knife knife techniques and stuff, yeah. And Is it light skin guy? No, 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 no. Just, just, I just saw, I just saw oh, a light right. There's one guy that's keep popping up on my feed, bro. I just, I just see loads of people like this, like just kind of thing. And I was like, and there was another female showing self-defense techniques, yeah? And I was watching, I was like, but you never had a fight. You don't understand violence. Yeah. You honestly don't understand. It's so hectic. It's it's scary because- Anything can go. Bro, I There's remember- There's no rules. I remember we had a we had a fight. There you go, another story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so we was in- uh, You want some more? We was in Morocco. Yeah, go on. We was in Morocco and then we, and a fight broke out. And before I knew it, because we were in a busy part, like the town centre, before I knew it, there was like hundreds of people, hundreds of people around us, like surrounding us a lot. And I'm like, oh, I, I, ain't fight, I can't fight a hundred people, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? There's no, there's no way. My cousin's taking his belt off. <laughs> I don't know why, what he was doing, bro. <laughs> like, and Such an arrow, bro. Yeah, he is, isn't it? Such a thing. <laughs> and, then, um, and then he's fighting one, one guy. And I'm trying to stop it because I know, because he's in this mode now, he only sees you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so he's trying to argue with this guy. I've seen all the people start gathering around. And it's like, I don't know who's with who. We're in Morocco. We're in an area that we don't even know. Like he could be like from that area yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. So and then... And then so he's trying to whip this guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's trying to whip him with a belt. He ended up hitting me in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> First and last time I ever tried to stop a fight though, anyway. <laughs> After that, I started just punching him. And then, uh, so then what happened, he kind of realized that, oh, wait, but there's like 20 people here. And he's like, there's only two of us that are going to, and the two of us, and there was right, like- Two someone, man deep and you were just like- There's two of us, but there was like other friends who were, who were females. And it was like, okay, yeah, this is going. This is going south, south. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And yeah. when you're teaching self defense and stuff, and it's like, yeah, what you do is take the knife off here, and it's like, mm. <laughs> yeah, nah, you need to exit left, bro. First, <laughs> yeah, keep it moving, bro. Yeah. <laughs> exit left. It is true though, bro. It's like you know, how do you de escalate stuff? I think it's quite dangerous as well, man. No, but it is because bro, and look where look at the platform they're learning it from as well. YouTube. We had another fight. That's a mad thing. Could you imagine watching something on YouTube? Uh, okay, yeah. Think about how you're. Oh, knife fight. Someone pulls out a knife. Like, yeah, I watched this on YouTube, bro. Not, no, no. I, I think that like, you know that bravado. You know what it is? It's not even self defense. I'm not even talking about the self defense side. I'm talking about that you do not understand what people are capable of. Yeah. Violent people. What 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 people will do on on road, you don't understand that, and that's the scary side of it. So when you're teaching, you're in a class environment, or it's, yeah, you're in a class, man. People are gonna pick up stuff, stab you. He don't. He might bite you. Get, stick his fingers in your eyes. His boy's gonna punch you in the face while he's standing next to you. He's gonna act. But my friend, who's well, someone's a, gonna pretend to be on the sidelines. My friend was an elite fighter. He got knocked out by some sixteen year old waste man eating chips because he was with him and he was in this eating chips next to him so he's arguing with the other guy the guy's eating chips and he goes I did not as he goes I saw him but I did not think this guy was going to hit me or, or had nothing to do he, he goes I, I, thought, I thought he was just watching he just waited he goes he circled he just went boom and he goes I mean, he goes, he clocked me I dropped on the floor and he was like you remember Chris Tucker which one are you hit me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was and, and I think that 
people don't realize. Yeah. Because there's no rules. There's no and rules. And it gets, it goes south very quick. But it's no rules, bro. Yeah, so yeah. Why, why, why do I have to adhere to, oh no. But even when you do jitsu, get me in your guard, I'm gonna bite you. Yeah. I'm gonna stick my fingers in your eyes. Do you know what I mean? There's always some sort of rule set. Like when you start looking at, okay, imagine you said to someone, do jujitsu, but do what you want though. Bite them, gouge their eyes, it's do what you want. a different game. It's it? different. Yeah. Would you hold the guy close to you now if he's gonna bite your neck? So it changes the whole psyche. So it's like, there's people who are nasty and that's that's what's scary. Yeah. That that stuff and I think stuff, yeah, you know what? Um, you need to teach children how to deal with situations by walking yeah. away. Safety first. I, I trained another lady that works in- Also uh, avoiding situations yeah, completely. I, I, I train I train a, a, um, a lady that works in um, a schizophrenic unit. So imagine this, bruv. Yeah, unpredictable, bro. She said to me she got she got attacked uh, recently. That she was walking down the hallway. The guy just popped out from nowhere, pinned her, pinned her against the door. So now, what do you? How do you deal with that? Yeah. Uh, Especially how, they got some next type of strength as well, bro. Yeah, but how, <laughs> bro, how how you could be talking to me like this, then all of a sudden start trying to punch me, yeah, kick yeah. me. So, um, what do you teach? How do you teach this person now? And what do you teach? So I I, I said to her, you, you know what? First thing I want to teach you is. Awareness. Yeah. Like you need to learn awareness. When you're walking down the corridors, never hold your papers and start looking at your yeah, papers. You're yeah. not going to read down your paper. You're not you're going to keep your phone in your pocket. You keep your papers and thing. When you get to your office, you start reading your, you do your work there. You're always going to be aware of thing. When you walk around the corner, don't walk right around the corner. Step out, walk around. Like, so you have time to deal <laughs> with stuff. This is what we need to teach. But you know what's funny, Kevo? When you yeah. grow up in the hood. Yeah. We was the one hiding around the corner. No, no, no you <laughs> learned those things. No, you, you, yeah. bruv, you know it's those normal, bro. Like. It's normal. Yeah, but bruv, you're kind of looking but again, around. But this is what I'm saying. Your so, thing. Like when you're sitting, I'll give you an example. When I go to my, when I used to go to McDonald's, yeah. I'd always face the door, bruv. Yeah. You're not catching me eating with my back towards the no, door. No, no, no. I'm yeah. looking at the door. John yeah. Wick style, bro. Yeah, yeah, all the time, bruv. I know that guy weighs 300 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that guy's that was, left handed. Uh, Jason Bourne, I know that guy's right handed. I'm going to bang him in a minute. If I was going to take him out, then her, yeah. Bruv, everyone gets Come it. On, That's bro. it, bro. Yeah, no, but it's, it, but, but again, but this is, again, this is what we're saying. Your life experience yeah. that you're teaching. I've seen too many things happen. Yeah, you're teaching people. Yeah. And I find that a lot of people, because they're unaware of situations, they get caught out. And because, yeah. and because we could have been, they could have been, like, I, like, for example, if you see a group, bruv, even if you can fight, I see a group of guys, I walk across the road. Yeah. I always do that. Not because I'm scared. It's because I'm giving them a chance. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? I have to, I get, uh, they have a chance to, by the time they, I said like, whichever wants to come first, you're going to get knocked out. <laughs> then, you, then, you, then the rest like, of you are going to run away. Then the rest yeah, of you yeah, yeah. I can't uh, remember what film was Jack that. Reacher. Jack, Jack Reacher. Jack Reacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That was such I'm a only joking, true. guys. I don't feel I'm, I'm, uh, uh, like, So it's like, you gotta give yourself time. These are these are these are martial arts uh, exper life experiences. Yeah, this yeah. is what I've experienced. This is what I've gone through. Again, it's, and I, when I told these stories, it's not being uh, glorifying it, glorifying it, anything. Yeah. It's just, bro, unfortunately, where we live and stuff. This is what the stuff we have to do. I I had to outside my house. There were four drug dealers. Now what do I do? Yeah, like I have to confront them. Do you get? Like you're selling your your yeah. your. your, your Cause they're gonna, it's gonna, they're, then they're gonna be in your yard, bruv. And it's gonna be bruv, a trap they were house. in my yard. That's practically in your yard, in, bruv. Bruv, yeah. you know my house, I was sitting there last time, I could hear shining. I opened my window, it's sitting right there. It's actually in my front of my house. What'd you do? Bruv, I had to, I spoke to him nicely. Oh, you did you? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I was like, come in the house. <laughs> That's one of the benefits of living in a flat, bruv. Yeah. No, but it was just, uh, <laughs> Like even though we had like, we've got rampant, like uh, there was a lot of drug dealing going on and stuff. Um, see what happens is I look at it as an adult, as a martial artist, and I'm dealing with this. How would kids 13, yeah. 14, you got these guys come, like there was uh, like that these guys done a drop off and then they try to get away and I was coming down the road and then they were trying to make, make me move because they've done a drop off kind of thing. And I was like, mm, don't think so. And then, um, 
But it was like, you know, <laughs> and, and, and you can see the, 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 the character. And I was like, my nephew comes home, like sometimes the bus, and I was like, yeah, how, how would he deal with these guys? So I always try to teach him not to, like if anything happens, you need to yeah. go in the shop, do this or whatever, call me. Yeah. Like, you know Also, what I mean? you should know you, like I'll give you an example. Call like, me, so like, we beat up together. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, I think also understanding the level of violence that needs to happen, bro. Like, I get, I, 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 give don't it, want, I don't, you know what is, I don't, no, no. I don't want him to get, I, I, even myself, bro. It's like, I'm saying, I give, the reason why I'm saying this is I'll give you an example, bro. Sometimes there's people out there that if you engage, you have to understand the level of violence that has to happen. But that's what I'm saying. Do you see what I'm saying? But, but that's so what I'm saying. You have to understand that yeah. and say, you know what? It's a Tuesday, bruv. Yeah. That's long. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. No, but it's All right, bruv, it. you're right. Okay, fine. Yeah. I remember- no, I, I, they won't let me out. <laughs> That's it, bruv. It was like, a, there was a guy doing a self-defense seminar and he was teach. everyone thought he was going to teach. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this on Instagram or whatever. It was, it was a jiu-jitsu club and he was teaching. And he goes, people don't have to de-escalate de stuff. So he goes to the guy, tell me, um, he goes, say, say to me, uh, what are you looking at? So the guy goes, what are you looking at? He goes, man, that shirt. That shirt's really cool. Bro, where do you get that shirt from? That's a really nice shirt. So he goes, then the guy will go, okay, then cool. Yeah. Then he goes, then he goes, are you looking at my girl? So another guy goes, are you looking at my girl? And he goes, is that is her name Maggie? Because I think I used to go to school with a girl called Maggie. <laughs> so it was like, you can de-escalate stuff very quickly before it even gets to anything. And I think this is a, a good thing to teach children yeah, as well. Bro. And how to avoid. It's not worth it, bro. But 99% of- Can I tell you a story what happened to me last Friday, bro? I went to pick up my kids from school. Yeah. And I don't normally lose my temper, bro. Like, I'm, I would say I'm quite, I'm not, I'm not that kind of, like, lose my temper very quickly, yeah? Yeah. So I'm coming out of, this is a road rage in, incident, yeah? So I'm, there's a traffic light. So imagine, I'm, it's, it's a T-junction, yeah? So yeah. I'm, I'm on a minor road. Yeah. And there's a traffic light just there. So for me to come out, there's always traffic. So someone has to let you go. Yeah. No one lets you go. So this guy, this guy, yeah, he leaves a gap. He stops, yeah. So I'm about to go. And then he drives slowly and looks at me like, like he wants to knock me out or something, bro. Like, uh, for no reason at all. Mm. Like, you know, like, you thought I was going to let you go kind of thing, Yeah. Anyway, the person behind him let him go, yeah? Let me go. So I'm driving behind him and he's driving 10 miles an hour, bro. Mm. But why? Bro. Like, what, why are you and angry I can at breakfast? feel, I can feel inside me. Was the heat starting? Yeah. I'm like, so there was a, there was a red light coming up. Yeah. So between, there must've been 10 seconds until we get to the red light. Yeah. And I'm fighting myself. Don't go beside him. I just decided to go beside him, bro. Yeah. So, so we're parked up like this, yeah? And I'm looking at him. I'm not trying to have a confrontation, but I just wanted to roll more in and say, why did you do that, bro? Yeah. Yeah? I'm looking at him and he's like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. was a warrior like that yeah, yeah. two minutes ago. Bro, bro. Oh, he didn't want to look. They always do that. <laughs> but remember, I said to you, I was coming Legion. And then, uh, same thing, T Junction. And what they, they've got, a, so basically at the T Junction, just in front, there's a there's a red light. So only one car can get in that red light. A van came and I pulled out and he didn't want me to go. And I'm like, so I still, still pulled my car out. I put my car, and I was like, I hold up, I was like, where are you going? <laughs> it's a red light. Where are you going? And he's going to me, I don't want you to go. <laughs> That's stupid. But why? And I was like, I don't, and I, and I started, I got really angry. I was like, but what, and I say thing, but like, why? Like, what, what is, why are you causing beef? Yeah, he's, he's got something going on in his and life. I don't bro. want you to go. I don't want you. And I was like, Right, man, this guy's like 12 years old or something, yeah. bro. Like, they're they're really the same strange. guys that buy bare toilet paper. You know those guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're the guys the that go guys, yeah. buy bare toilet yeah, paper, yeah. bro. There was another time, one time, bro, I come out the car. I come out the car. The guy's, he's come out of his car, actually, first. Yeah. yeah? Come on, what, what happened. Just to defend yourself. So he's come out the car. <laughs> I've come out the car now. Yeah. So I, I, I thought, let me just preempt this. I said, listen, are we going to scrap, bro? 
straight away. I didn't want to talk. What are you doing? Well, I, I didn't want to say, I said, look, if we're not going to have a fight, let's just go back in our cars and keep it moving, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just like, I said it in a very, not an angry way. I kept my tone, you know, level. I said, look, are we going to have a fight? Are we going to scrap? If we're not going to scrap, let's get in our cars and go back to our families, bro. Yeah. He's like, all right then, man. He got back in his car and I go, man, we kept it moving, bro. Yeah, some, but some, some people, I think, uh, uh, it's I got, like, like, why are we doing this for? This is dumb. During the, uh, during the uh, Corona, there was, I was, I had a police officer and he's bobbing it down the roads and I, I come out of, of the thing. He was miles away from me. And then he started holding at me and like swearing at me in his car. So I just went, what? I just stuck my finger Did up. Did you know he's a police officer? Yeah. Well, was it Mark Carr? Mark, Mark Carr, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Well, proper panda, panda car. The, 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 the estate thing, innit? Yeah, with, with the police mark. Yeah, everything, everything, bro, everything. Yeah, bro, so. you middle finger the police officer, bro. Standard, bro. Yo, G, bro. <laughs> yeah, standard. But I was driving and I was... Uh, Right, it wasn't even a mistake, bro. It was like no, no, bro. It was not Ali G style. Remember yeah. Ali G? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, he bro. just did that. I was doing that yesterday in his face, bro. <laughs> I done it in his face, and it was like, um, because you, uh, Rah, that's cause, deep, blood. So what he done? No, but look what happened, though, yeah. So then he, he, I, I, I carried on driving, and I was looking at the review, and I was like, he's gonna pull me over. He's gonna, yeah, pull, he's me gonna over. pull you over. So I got, I saw, so then he came back. Did he put like, your seatbelt on? But remember, he had his lights on, yeah. Okay, so right. he's bombing it that way. Came back. Pull me over, got out of the car. Why are you? Who the hell do you think you are swearing at me? I go, who are you swearing at me? Then he's like, I go, what's your emergency? <laughs> um, and, Burn! <laughs> and he went, yeah, it's none of your business. <laughs> and I went, he, got, he got called off. <laughs> oh, he yeah? Got, he got called off. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Then a buddy boy event, uh, come over here. Yeah? So they all come out the car. Oh, what's going on? What's going on? And I'm standing there like, yeah, listen. And he's like, oh, he's, he's, and he's telling him like, oh, he just stuck his finger up at me and all this stuff. And I said, yeah, I go, cause you're a waste man. I go, where were you going? And then he goes to me, couldn't you see me coming? I said, yeah, you were miles away. I said, bro, I've been driving since I was 17. Like, I, I'm sure I can judge the distance. Yeah. You're over there. And then I go, did, I go, did you hit me? He went, no, I had to press my brakes. I said, no, you never, I stopped lying. Yeah. So he went, carried on. He got my details. And then uh, he checked the kind of thing. And they come back here. <laughs> and he goes to me, have you got a thing on your chest? And I was like, yeah, I have. And he said to me, oh, okay, cool. What? Have I got a tattoo on my chest? Okay. Like, yeah, I got a how did he know? Because it's on the thing, in it? <laughs> I'm not even going to ask how it got on there, bro. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so, I I'm not even going to ask. Another story, bro. <laughs> That's another story, bro. Then he, I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he goes to me, oh, okay. he goes, you got a problem with us lot. And I said, I don't have a problem with you lot. I have a problem with people for in, uh, abusing their authority, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't like bullies. And he said to me, I was having a bad day. He actually said that to you. And look, bro, he got, it complete, and he got, and he, then, because then, I spoke to him, I, I was... Every you went time, aggressive, yeah. I went aggressive. I just said, and when he said to me, he goes, you got a problem with us a lot. I said, I, I, go, I don't have a problem with police. I go, but I have a problem with people chucking their authority around. And I go, you had nowhere to go. And you know that. Yeah. yeah. And then you just started trying to take it out on me. And then he goes to me, I was just having a bad day, mate. And all this stuff. Then he goes, look, he goes, I'm sorry. And he shook your hand. Shook oh, he shook your hand as well. Yeah, cool, That's it. That's it. Cool. I started, then as I drove, I stuck my middle finger up again. <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah, one no, time I got... <laughs> Did you play hit him up, bro? <laughs> hey, one time I took... Hey, your friend. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, bro, one time a police officer, proper, mo it was my fault. Yeah. It was my fault, yeah. He moisted me off. Nasty, bro, yeah? yeah. So I'm, I'm at a junction. I'm on my phone. I shouldn't have been on my phone, yeah? And so there's... So the... He's on the other side on another road. So yeah. his main road, he's on the opposite side. I'm, but I didn't know he's, he's in a Vauxhall Zafira on his, on his jacks. Yeah. Yeah. So like unmarked car, whatever. So he's looking at me, yeah. And he's like, get off your phone, get off your phone like that through the window, yeah. And I'm like, who's this waste man, bro? Who the hell are you? <laughs> yeah. So I'm driving off. I'm driving. So I go past him, innit? He pulls out his badge. I was like, ah, sorry, bruv, man. Yeah, respect <laughs> <to> the <laughs> He must have felt like a bad man after that, bro. Yeah, Zafir, he's either a predator or his police, fam. Yeah, one of the two. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But oh. every, uh, uh, my, who, who told me this? I cover four white men in a Ford one day, 100% police yeah, officer. Come yeah, on, yeah, yeah. I, 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 come I got pulled over by him the last time. They're always that, on, that with no hubcaps. They, they never have yeah. hubcaps and it's blue. Bruv, I saw police in a minicab, bro. 
They yeah. had the sticker and everything, bro. Bro, they're everywhere. Yeah. Now they're everywhere. What do you mean? Bro, they had a minicab car. They, three of them come out in a minicab car and they were filling How up. How do you know it was a minicab car? It had that green, you know, that green sticker. Like a like, minicab thing. The green oh, minicab sticker. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Decoys. You want yeah. to come to Legion? Yeah. You want to come to Legion yeah. and when I'm going home, I always see, like, I'm driving and then I see, <laughs> past me, I'm a police car. All the time. Same on one. A Different. Just did all the time. And I know it's very, I go look at the car fit. You will never think they're feds. Yeah, yeah bruv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will never think they're feds. Yeah, bruv. I like, saw man them feds, bruv. So just like, a question. Low trousers, gone. Are we still on the same topic? Nah, bruv. We went, what topic? I don't know, bruv. Nah, we, we, bruv, it's a podcast, isn't it, bruv? We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll go round and round, bruv. I'm just saying, round, 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 round. Two hours, bruv. I'm just saying, we've been talking about the right thing, innit? Is yeah, it one, is it two o'clock in the morning? No, no, no. <laughs> two hours. <laughs> Let's wrap it up, innit? That's right. No, no, we, you, uh, we, 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 yeah, we spoke kids. about. Yeah, okay. yeah, we did. We did speak about it, kind of. But um, how did we get to the police thing? Oh yeah, uh, abusing authority and, no, and just, avoiding uh, avoiding conflict. Avoiding conflict. I think. Yeah. I think this is a, this again. Uh, you know the stuff that you said before, though. The six. Uh, yeah. Uh, key skills. Yeah. Because those six key skills is basically what we teach. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, even things like, for example, I remember like, I always remind the kids as well when they come in, like I see them when, when acrobatics start, yeah? Their eyes get big. You know, the first day. Yeah. They're like, how am I going to do this, man? Front roll, back flips, all this stuff, yeah? Yeah. And then I always say to them, look, we always break it down to the most, the easiest, you know. Part, yeah. Part. And then six... Six to nine months later, they're all doing. I'm like, do you remember the first day you came? You couldn't do anything. It, it, it'd be nice to record them. Yes, yes. It's yes, like you yes. know, you had a visual record of. I'm sure their parents are always on their phones, isn't it, bro? Yeah, but, I'm saying it, but, but just to start, even like yeah, adults, sometimes like definitely, you know, man, hundred percent. When we get old, when, when we start training, we don't realize that the progress that you've made. Hundred percent, definitely. That you start bro. thinking. Oh, but God. again, it's it's about like. Um, you know, like you said, life is hard, man. Yeah. So we build strong people. Exactly. I so, can't say that no more. You know, every time I say life is hard, I just might have life we build strong people. <laughs> hashtag, <laughs> hashtag life is hard, we build strong people. Just constantly. Yes. Um, what's it gonna say? Um it's it's kind of like do you remember um do you ever watch Star Trek, bro? Yeah. Um, the old, old Star Trek. Old old one, yeah. yeah. Do you know the bit when they go into the hologram thing? What's it called? Are um, oh, you talking about Star Trek? Uh with Picard. Picard, yeah. Next yeah, generation. Yeah. Next generation. Next they go the into the holodeck. Holodeck. Yeah, yeah. holodeck. yeah, and they yeah. create all these kind of... That I for would me, want one, not going to oh, lie. I'd love holodeck. But that for that me, that's what martial yeah, arts bro. is, bro. It's it's like creating this kind of holodeck, an environment where you can test yourself with fear, with... Sandbox. Um, yeah, you sandbox. You sandbox. So, so you get in that environment. And I'll I give you an example, bro. Going to work here, I, I've, I've worked in, a, in an organization... You're going to get people trying to bully you, bro. Yeah. I've seen it, bro. I remember one guy, bro. The guy was messing with the wrong guy, bro. Yeah. Yeah. He was trying to, he was trying to tell me, I remember, um, this guy was from Oxford. Yeah. So he came, he, he got a director, a director role in the organization. Yeah. And, and I was basically directly underneath him and I was the talent there. Do you understand? I was the one that got the money in, and 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 I was. I'm not trying to blow my own horn, but when you're management, yeah, management is making the things move. Mm. You should look after the people that are actually doing the stuff, mm. right? So, for example, if you run a gym, your talent is your coaches. Mm. Do you get me? Yeah. Don't get it twisted, bro. You're not the talent. You're just as a gym owner or, or or as a thing. Your coaches are the ones that is the product, right? So I had a conversation with him because he was trying to get me to do something that I knew wouldn't work. Yeah. So I said to him, listen, with all due respect to you, you're from Oxford, yeah. I grew up on these streets, bro. And these kids are this, they, they grew up in the same area as me. I know what makes them tick, what makes them not tick. And these things are not going to work. Yeah. Anyway, like kept it moving, bro. Sends me an email, bro. So I need to have a meeting with you in this cafe somewhere. I'm like, well, this is a bit dodgy, bruv. So I'm like, cool. So he, well, I'll meet him in the cafe. And then um, he says to me, Muhammad, you know what you're you're saying is very, very dangerous. I was like, what? And he kind of like, he kind of done this, okay, bro. Like, this is what he did, yeah? So I'm sitting down like this. Then he went like this. What, yes? You know, you only do that in your face. Like that. Like, you know, when you kind of like, in at, 
he was trying to intimidate me, bruv. Yeah. So I'm sitting back and I went, I went like that on the table as well. And he kind of got taken aback a little bit. Yeah. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, oh, you're trying to call me a racist. Shut your mouth. Can you imagine that, bro? Mm. I said, what do you mean? I said, if I wanted to call you a racist, I would use the word racist. Yeah. I go, I don't, I don't, I told you how it is and you didn't like it. That's the reality. Yeah. Do you get me? Three months down the line, kept it moving, bro. He I couldn't, he couldn't handle, some people can't handle um, someone actually who's got an opinion, bro. Yeah, yeah, but it's but Do you get me. But, so I'm not threatened. If someone's got an opinion, if I'm working with someone, yeah. he's got. Opinion, I'm not threatened by that, bro. Yeah, like actually, like resilient, being resilient. Yeah? yeah, like you know what, that guy might actually have a point. But I think Hamlo, because you've got that characteristic, which is good. Now we need to help kids get that. That's it. I think that's that's basically that's, what, that's basically that's it. Basi- so from your from because like what you said, like people working in, and the thing is though, like. These kids don't know about working in uh, a working environment. So now it's about transferable skills. Transferable skills, and exactly. that's what that's what that's ultimately that's what you're doing. Yeah, you're, you're trying to help them have transferable skills. Um, so how do we do this? Let's 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 go into it and we will wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. So as so let's look at it from a from a martial arts school perspective. Yeah. Mm. So first things first, you create a safe environment for those kids. Yeah. I we don't tolerate. Anyone discouraging someone who can't do something. Did you hear that um, Pitbull thing? Um, shout out to Jude oh, Samuel. Oh, Ch- yes. Shout out to Jude Samuel who puts the best... Uh, best yeah, uh, Instagram content Instagram out there, Instagram content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brightens up my day every day. Uh, yeah. Postman Pat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jamaican Postman Pat, bro. Um, no, but he put up a, a, a Pitbull, a clip of Pitbull. Yes, about everyone clapping for... So he says that yeah. when, when a kid falls down... Um, but when sorry, when the kids learning to walk, um, when they first try to learn how to walk, they they everyone starts clapping. Like, get up, get up, get up, get up, and then do it again, do it again. And he goes that uh, you encourage that person, and they end up walking. When you get an adult, you fall down, bro. No one's yeah. They come well, in there. They laugh at you, bro. Yeah, they laugh at you and embarrassing. Or they wish you to fall as well. But yeah, a lot, a lot of them trip you over, bro. That's so <laughs> <true>. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the thing. So you create, number one, create a safe environment. Create, yeah. a, create a very positive, safe environment. Yeah. And I don't mean a, 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 a marshmallows and rainbows and all this stuff. I mean, actually, because kids not, can smell BS, bro. Not encouragement, bro. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so it's, kids, bro, if you say to them, them you're good at something, they, they know they're not good at, bro, they smell know, BS, bro. I've, a lot of kids, a lot of kids, you know, when, when I come around, I said, oh, you done really well today, man. That kind of thing. You see them like, yeah, 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 yeah. Chest stick out. And their and performance, it, yeah, like, it, it and goes it, up. And then you, and, and, it, and do they get that at home? Do they get that at school? Yeah, anyway. Do they get anyway. that on the street? Do they get that on, bro, do they get that on TV? Yeah. Is there positive st- This the, And another thing as well, we need to stop relying on other people trying to teach our kids, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Stop trying to, TV shouldn't have, bro, if there's no one representing you, yeah, say for example, oh, I never, I never sat, when I used to watch TV on a Saturday, yeah, and watch Price is Right and Family Fortune and all, I never used to think, that, how come there's no Muslims on there? No. I just think, well, that's a bunch of white people like playing games, bruv. I never felt like I need to be represented on TV, bruv. Yeah. Like, that's not going to add or take away from my life, but yeah. personally. Yeah. yeah, we should have that, but I shouldn't be waiting on someone else to do it. Do you yeah. get me? So that's number one, yeah? Creating a safe environment. But no- did that, but, but, but even, even then, bruv, did, did it, Infl- did it did it t- t- change anything? No, because you were, at home, because you were secure in yourself. Yeah, because my, my my dad and my mom they never made me feel like that's what I'm trying to say to you. Yeah, that's what that's the other things. Like you can't be said at the beginning was yeah. once you're secure with who you are, you can watch other people's shows. And yeah, think, and okay, cool. It's a show. It's I'll I'll take it as it is. It's entertainment. It's a show, and I don't really need to. But you just but if but that's why I've never downloaded TikTok, bro. TikTok, yeah. Yeah, bruv. I did it for bare snowflakes on TikTok. I, I did it for a week and I just went delete. Yeah, bro. I, I couldn't do it, bro. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. it was too I've been much. watching this guy, Matt Walsh, uh, John Walsh or Matt Walsh. He does uh, reactions to TikToks, bro. I what like he's um, he just destroys bro them about you know the kids. Uh, one oh my god, there was one this woman. She's you know they do makeup and. You know, have, have you seen those ones? They do makeup and talk. At the same time? 
at the same time. So okay. they're kind of doing makeup, yeah. So this woman's talk, they're doing makeup and talking. She's like, oh, I don't, um, when I ask my kid to do something, I don't expect them to say yes. And if they say no to me, I just ask them to justify why no. Look at him, like, Shut your mouth, bruv. These are the people that are going to stop Russia from invading the UK. Get out of here, bro. You know what I'm saying, bruv? <laughs> come Can on. Can you imagine that, bruv? <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, bruv. You're getting what? She goes, she asked her kid to clean the room. The kid goes to her, no, nah, I don't want to clean it right now. And she goes, all right, fine. She goes, why? She goes, because I don't want to. I'm like... I remember back in the day, I was the human remote control. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 10 times. 10 times as well. Change the channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bro, you used to walk up. You remember the buttons, you had to play, press the button yeah, on the, on the, on the TV. telly as well, bro. And then, uh, then you go back up, then you go back to your room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you think someone's dying. Yeah. <laughs> you can run back in and start, yeah. Uh, uh, you try and go off like that. Off. Go BBC, but bro. you do it, bro. You're getting clapped up, bro. But you do it. I remember my dad used to wake me up, yeah. It, it, it's like, He's coming in once, get up, and you hear, you know, of the curtain. Yeah. <laughs> if he has to come in again, it's on. There's something gonna happen to you that you're not gonna like. Emotional, me. damn it. You- That's what's gonna happen, my guy. Real jiu jitsu's happening, bro. That's what I'm saying to you. So I knew what ty- type it was, bro. Yeah. I'm at one time, he said to me, if you're not home at nine o'clock, you're not coming in the house. This is after training as well. Yeah. I came back from training. Um, when you took your time, nah, bro. I was. I probably could have got home at, at nine, bro. Because you know, you know what happens after training, innit? Tra- yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah, got home. It was about fifteen quarter past nine, bro. I was at, outside the house the whole night, almost the whole night. I, I would like to say the whole night, but it wasn't because my mom let me in after he went to sleep, bro. Yeah. yeah. And she's skinner. She's looking through the window like this. And I'm in there. the court. Oh, by the way, don't come out the courtyard. Yeah, yeah stay there. You're staying there, bro. Yeah. Did I come home late after that? Nah, bro. Yeah. Because I spoken, I told you don't come late, but you did, innit? Yeah. So that's 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 what you got, bro. Yeah. And that's what life is like. Yeah. So, so um, what was the other? So creating a safe environment, bro. Having a good curriculum, 100%. which that's so important, and 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 your student needs to understand the levels that you what you expect from them. At each level. Yeah. Yeah, it's very important to differentiate, for example, white belt, uh, orange belt, yellow belt, whatever it is. But even if like, if you, when you, when you go to school, you kind of get the material to learn for the exam. Mm. So when you just do random stuff and then you do an examination and you say, oh yeah, we're going to cover this. And it's like, we didn't do any of that. Yeah. yeah it doesn't exactly. make sense. Exactly. And obviously as a student, you want to know what you, I remember, <laughs> I remember as a trade, when I was training for MMA fight, or training, and then I had to go for like S and C sessions. So I got to guy, what are we doing today? I can't tell you that. It's like a fight. You might not know. I said, bro, <laughs> are you stupid? I know I'm fighting. I got a fight in eight weeks. It's three rounds, five minutes. Yeah, exactly. You can tell me what I'm going to do today. No, no, but it's the surprise element. I was, I was surprised you were left hook in a minute. <laughs> like, what stupid, bro? You know that. that yeah, yeah, didn't make sense. He probably didn't have a lesson plan, bro. He, but he, you know, it was it, it, again no experience. Yeah. So what you're doing is making things. Like, you, bro. Just, you think you think by you saying that to me, oh yeah, he's trying. I'm to gonna keep, get impressed. I'm getting impressed, and then like you know, I'm gonna keep him guessing. Kind of thing. Nah, bro. I need. I want to know. I'm that type of guy. I want to know how I'm gonna go from here. Yeah. To here. Tell me what you expect. But even back in the day, when we was when we was training for fights. Again, this is why I think we've developed curriculums for everything. Is um, I remember as a student, I went to one of my instructors. I said to him, um, "Like fitness training, what should I do?" He says, "Go run." I was like, "Okay." I put my trainers on. I remember next day I put my trainers on. I was like, "I'm gonna go for a run." I ran to the top of the road and came back home. <laughs> I was like, well, "How long you for need framework, bro? What what is it?" Yeah. And especially, and I go, I understood what my brain was like. I needed framework. Yeah. I've always needed framework. But all students, bro, man. Yeah, but I'm saying to you, but I, me specifically, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a curriculum guy. Yeah. If you tell me, even when I train, I need to know what I'm doing. Yeah. And before I go, and because you have to measure your, your performance you measure it. and you plan everything measure. out as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't just, I don't like random. And um, so, so you got that and then you have discipline. Yeah. Because there's no point having 
a safe environment, the curriculum and no discipline. That yeah. doesn't work. No. I, and, and, and it's a dictatorship. In the class, it's a dictatorship, bro. Yeah, it's the- uh, You're Hall- the dictator, bro. It's the United States of Hollywood. That's now. it, bro. Not even United States, bro. It's like uh, United States democracy, bro. No, it's, it's the more United like States of Khalid oh, Ismail. Oh, <laughs> That's what it is, bro. It's the, I tell you, bro, it's the United States of Khalid Ismail. That's it, bro. Like, you're, what you're, I say goes, if you don't like house. it, get the hell out, bro. Yeah, it's straight though, bro. Yeah. I always, I always tell people that. It's, it's because if you don't, if you can't create that environment where they have to listen. Yeah. They have to take your, but, and again, it goes back to that safety thing. Because uh, loads of times when I, when I stop, when I stop the class, like for example, I always tell everyone before we start rolling, I said, if I see, especially the kids, if any of the students tap and you carry on, you're not going to train it no more. Yeah, yeah. I will kick you out. Because my whole thing is that, safety, okay, yeah. safety. So it goes back to that safety thing, but discipline as well yeah. and being able to take instruction. You're not going to do what you want to do. You're going to do everything in within the rules that I tell you, I set. So and plus because, and you don't even have to know about it. So do I, don't, I don't have to explain myself to you. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. You're good. I, I, a why coach? You don't need to know. And if you, and again, if someone's really that wants to know, now call them aside. Okay, look, when someone taps, you can choke them. They're gonna think. Obviously, they know. They they know why why you tap. But I don't go over the top and say, yeah. oh, I like. I, I find a lot of people. They and there's nothing, Muhammad. Like, what, what people need to work on is when they make a decision and they want to tell the class, whatever. Man, that's. That's your class. Yeah. Tell them and it's done. And it, that's the rules. That's what we're implementing. Yeah, yeah. If you don't like it, there's other go places. Go train somewhere else. There's bro. other places that yeah. you can go train at. And again, it's not, these are the rules that we're setting and I don't have to explain that to you. And I think your child will thrive, bro, in that environment because you've set, a, you've set a framework. Yeah. You've set a safe space for them to train. Yeah. You've got a curriculum, which is, which has got stages in it that's going to take your child from one, one, one level to another level to another, or seamlessly, bro, into into adulthood, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you've got you've got an instructor that firstly understands how to teach. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. For example, now when we're teaching, the technique is almost secondary. I, I know it sounds weird, yeah, but like the psychology of the student, their ability. Uh, the class, you've got 30 kids in a class, all of them are different levels. Yeah. A good coach will will be able to kind of differentiate between all the students, bro. Can I, just, can I say something? I, I think we've I think the main thing with what differentiates our academies is this. We're not we're using martial arts as a vehicle to teach people how to become better people. Yeah, that's it. And that is it. Simple. I'm not in I, I'm not competing you with competing against other people in BJJ, yeah, MMA or anything. I'm just teaching people who are um, willing to learn, listen, um, uh, take what knowledge I've got, make them better people that they can deal with life lessons. <laughs> Man, I used to train, I trained the, I trained the, who someone who became a really good friend of mine. Um, she had a, when she first came to the gym, she had a stroke, she had a stroke and then I ended up starting to, I, tra- I trained her. <laughs> when you train someone who's had a stroke, life changing experience, it's different. It's not about how big your muscles yeah, are. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can kick and if no, this person just wants to move and yeah. be healthy and stuff. So they so again, we've experienced all this stuff. So you're trying to teach people this. This is what's important. So like I keep saying, it is and basically this way, I've gone past all that. It's not that bravado stuff or anything yeah. like it's basically how do we make good citizens? How do we make a good community? How do we make our kids thrive in the world? What are they going to give back? The main thing, what, inshallah, like we train people that they understand about, they 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 think about other people like their teammates. Um, and if they think about their teammates, when they're actually in the world, they're thinking about other people. And that's what we want to teach. Well-rounded individuals, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think, and we're just using martial arts as the vehicle for this. Yeah. And I think that's the main thing. Um, this whole... Uh, I'm an MMA fighter. You go somewhere else, bro. Yeah. I, I, I'm not. But if 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 the bribe product, I give you an example. If you, if you run an academy like this, like I was talking about, you're having set curriculums, um, drilling, um, uh, respect, uh, good coaching, safe environment, 
um, a welcoming environment, all these things, yeah, the byproduct of that, you will get a world champion, bro. No, no, but again, but that's no, not the no, goal. But that's 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 again, what I'm saying. I, I'm that's not, not the goal. That's what my hope, bro. I don't care if you become world champion. If you, I, I've trained people that I wouldn't spend two seconds with them, and they're world champions. Yeah, yeah, or they're cha- national champion. I, I wouldn't. I would not spit on them, bro, because their character stinks. Yeah, and I wouldn't want my children around them. I wouldn't want your children around yeah. them. I wouldn't want anyone around them because why? They're not the right people, bro. Yeah. Everything's selfish about them, all this stuff. So you can keep that. Yeah. What I want and what I've learned through martial arts and what I what I embody um, and what I teach is, okay, martial arts is, okay, bro, even if you fight, say you fight for 10 years, then what are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do after 10 years? So then you want to carry on this sport for, as long as possible. So what are you teaching? Yeah. So what are you going to keep teaching later on? How, what is what is your personality? So if you go to that, those type of guys that teach that, that thing, okay, cool, but you're just going to get 30 people just the same as him. Yeah, yeah, It's like po- po- cult of pers- personality. Yeah, but you will though, bro, like, because it's going to be like-minded people. Yeah, and then so, this toxic environment. Yeah, exactly. And that, then, and then why, why do you think... Um, a lot of clubs, they have subdivision groups in their clubs... Because it's a toxic environment, yeah, yeah. and it's like uh, they've created this, some this vacuum or this this thing. Because uh, it's not about you, like, for example, at Legion, I would like to think, and I'm saying the same with you. You unite behind the flag. Yeah, it's not about me. Yeah. It's about everyone. Yeah, like for example, you said the for for Legion is being stronger together. Yeah. That's what I said to you. It's very <laughs> yeah. You know, again, very le- sim- Legion has uh, stronger together. We have life is hard. We build strong people. Um, I think, brother, look, me, me, you, Amir, we're like brothers. We, 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 our goals are, have always been the same. Brother, I've known Amir for such a long time, mashallah. And it's like. And he's been the same. Yes. That's, that's, that's the thing for me. Again, my whole thing. Even you. Me. Yeah. I've known you for how long yeah. now? Like I haven't changed. You haven't changed. That's what I'm saying. So I don't mean like, it in an ignorant way. No, no, no. But it, like, I'm not going to tomorrow wake up and be a douchebag, bro. Our values like, are the same. Yes. Like, we, uh, we'll grow in other ways, but our values are the same. And I think that's the beauty of it. So when, when we, when we used to train in a club, I remember it's like, bro, for me, it's like, if someone came to me and wants to become a world champion, I will do my best to help them to become whatever yeah. they want to become. But that is not, I don't look at you as a student and say, I want to make you world champion. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. make you world champion. I, I, I want to look at you and think to myself, okay, what is it that you need? Yeah. What do you need for me to help you to become a well, better Well, so you're not person? living through them either. But what is, yeah. but to be honest, it's like, there's other things that we can do with martial arts to help people. And I think yourself, we've got, a, we've got opportunity to do, to do that. But if I've, if I can say, uh, we have 30 kids in our class and we somehow inspire them, motivate them, change them in certain ways that they, I remember Coach Khali telling me this something or yeah. I remember Coach Mohammed telling me or Coach Amir saying something to me and I, I was able to deal with this situation. But I've done my job. Yeah, I've done my job because that is the goal. That's the goal. That they, they're able to deal with life problems, life issues and all that stuff through martial arts. So let's wrap, wrap up. it up. So what's this? Uh... Okay. So... <sighs> Oh yeah, wait till the end. Yeah, wait till the end. So this is the end. This is the end, yeah. So, okay guys, so I'm taking over now. Go on, take (laughs) over, bro. So we're going to introduce or we would like to introduce a new show that we'll be doing. Um, It's going to be called Bedouin Breakdowns. Um, I'm going to be the host and Mohammed will be co-host. Hopefully. Inshallah. So, and he'll, uh, we'll be breaking down fights uh looking at past fights uh fights that are coming up just giving you my input um and Mohammed will be grilling me with his questions i said grilling i'm trying to learn bro yeah that's what or whatever we just my 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 role within this whole show because when we were when we were kind of brainstorming it was kind of i kind of pushed Khaled into doing this because <laughs> i know it, it was something that like we were looking for a format right like on how how do we um, how do we push this whole martial arts thing, right? Um, you have MMA, and I will look 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 at it more as a companion show to MMA. So while while having someone from the UK who's been in this scene for a long time, who's trained and he's taught, and um, I, I feel like a lot of people 
value his opinion. And um, like, even me, like I always ask him when there's fights coming up, what, what's your perspective on, you know, what's going on? Like, for example, Kobe versus Masvidal and her, what, what's your opinion on how it's going to go? And like, even the, the post, we're doing like a pre-show, post-show. Uh, we're, we're still trying to iron out the, the niggles. Um, but it'd be a good, I think, for us, uh, the community in the UK, to have a show like this run by people like us. Um, uh, and and we're able to kind of uh, bring it to a new audience. Do you see what I'm saying? An audience which maybe not necessarily would watch other breakdown shows. Do you yeah. get me? Um, again, representation. Yeah. So we might not be invited to the party, but we create our own parties, bro. That's, uh, and it's not because of that. It's just that sometimes um, we want to inspire the next generation to kind of go and create their own content and be genuine about it. Yeah. And I was talking to, I'm going to shout out Dilly from uh, Blood Brothers. We were, we were speaking, I was just chatting to you just before the podcast. And um, sometimes I'm not just talking about the Muslim community, but I can only talk about our community, right? Um, sometimes we try and emulate we we come out with this like B tech version of what mainstream is doing. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, and I'm not calling anyone out specifically. I'm just saying in general, in general. Like, um, um, if you look at Saudi, like, uh, for example, you might go to a McDonald's alternate. Do you get me? Or like a uh, Al Bake or um, I don't know. I don't know Al Bake's quite nice, bro. But <laughs> like, we might create something that is an emulation of of something else. And, um, and there's a whole website dedicated to it, by the way. Yeah. Hilarious shop names. Oh, wow. Okay. We're in Algeria. What was that? They've got, um, what have they got? <laughs> Maknana. <laughs> Is it Maknana? Yeah. Yeah, Maknana, bro. For like, and, uh, well, T-Skull with the I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Morris sings. <laughs> Morris, Morris sings. Sings. <laughs> Singsbury. 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 So it's like, but. I want to encourage other creators as well to kind of come out and make genuine content, which we're not. Clowns. So there's like, do you see what I'm saying? Genuine content by, from people who know what they talk. We've got a lot of experience in our community. That's why I urged Khalid, look, we, people need to to hear what you got to say. Do you get me? Mm. Um, so hopefully we'll, we're working out the, the content now and maybe looking to launch maybe after Ramadan, inshallah, sometime. Sure. Um, so we're going to produce it. We're going to produce it and, and, uh, uh, we just got to figure out the whole copyright stuff, man. That's the one thing that we have to figure out. But make it, uh, deliver it in a way which is palatable, inshallah, yeah, inshallah. For, for the general audience. Um, and if anyone has any uh, ideas of what they want to see and stuff, yeah. that'd be a thing. Again, we're, we're look, focusing on MMA, uh, fight breakdowns, yeah. um, past fights, future, future fights that are going to come up. Um, even also, like might even do fight companions even, as well, like even you know, boxing, stuff. kickboxing boxing, yeah. and stuff. Because obviously, uh, that's two my, gorillas fighting each other, bro. It that's could be my, that's my background. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, background. Sorry, that was my background. Two gorillas fight each other. Well, it could be any fight, isn't it? Could yeah. be like two pigeons fighting just, each other, bro. I'm just just talk about <laughs> two <laughs> pigeons. You know, <laughs> could be anything, bro. Why, why not, bro? Yeah, why not, man? <laughs> you do animal shows, isn't it? Two, <laughs> two leopards fighting each other, whatever, bro. Crane fist. Yeah, yeah, exactly, bro. But um, yeah, I'm looking actually looking forward to this one. It's a different type of show. This guy's different, isn't it? It's not it's a uh, bit different. Yeah, for 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 us. Um, and I think just starting this podcast really open my eyes to what can, can be done. Mm. You know, like uh, sometimes you look at things and you think, man, that looks difficult, man. That looks slack. And that's why I encourage anyone um, who is a bit daunted and what you want to do something, you're a bit daunted. It looks daunting or whatever. Just go for it, man. Like, like we say in Algeria, uh, is it? Uh, I just said push with your chest. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> In English, well, as dumb bro. Basically, go with your head. Go with your head. Yeah, go with your head. Um, just, just, just jump do in. it. Just jump, jump in. in. Yeah, yeah, jump in. Yeah, and then figure it out. Sometimes yeah. you just got to figure it out. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I've spoken for way too long. Uh, how you got anything else to add? No, that's uh... that's it. So I guess that's the announcement. You've made it to the end, and uh, I guess I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>